that time of year for us in the northern hemisphere it's starting to feel a wee bit cold and chilly and for me that naturally means i'm drawn to cask strength waters i do enjoy them at this time of year and it's no coincidence that this is also the time of the year that a lot of these releases get refreshed or their annual release is brought out for us to chase or not to chase well i've been caught out this year and i've chased quite a few more than i intended to we're just spoiled for choice honestly speaking so for the third year running in november we're going to do the cast strength b pub and i'm going to share some of these pours with you and try and help you decide which ones to pick if you're going to choose any over the course of this winter season i'm looking forward to it i'll see you all in a second Hello, whiskey folk. Hello, everyone. How am I looking tonight? A bit strange, a bit weird, a bit milky, a bit odd. <laughs> like I've got some kind of tan or something. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, I upgraded my Mac and uh, uh, Sonoma does not support my camera setup. So I've now got a big black metal redundant piece of kit sitting in front of the camera I'm broadcasting to you on tonight, which is my phone. <laughs> I cobbled together uh, this evening uh, a makeshift rig in order to continue with the VPUB tonight. So if I'm looking a wee bit different, that's the reason. I mean, it's not going to be all bad in all directions. Some things will actually be an improvement. For example, um, the phone is going to be much faster at focusing and things like that. And uh, But I've just got a lot less control, so I, I notice that things are a wee bit weird. I can't lock down white balance and stuff like that, for example. Not yet. Anyway, we roll on. You don't really need to see me particularly clearly, right? As long as you can hear me clearly, fingers crossed the audio is working okay. We're still having that problem at the startup, at the intro, with the audio blips happening. I still can't get to the bottom of it. I'm convinced it's software regardless. We soldier on. It's the VPUB, but it's whiskey, and we're looking forward to our Thursday night hanging out together and the technical hitches we just need to power through. Hopefully it's working. <laughs> Good old Max. They just work, says Gordon Fraser. <laughs> well, they do, but then it's the other apps that are supposed to kind of update and be ready so that when the new... I mean, Sonoma's been out for a while now. I thought it would be safe upgrading, but uh, I think I was a wee bit ahead of myself. Never mind. We're all good. How are you? I hope you're doing very, very well. I have got 90% of my voice back after the weekend in Glasgow that we just had, and what a weekend it was. It was absolutely fantastic. It was the type of weekend that tires you out and energizes you all at the same time. I was tired, but I was good this week. I didn't go too crazy on the Friday night. I came home early on the Saturday night. Uh, it was a nice cadence, a nice easy pace throughout the day on the Sunday. And then I finished it all off with a, a whiskey club night on Monday night, hosted by Loch Lee. So it was quite an intense weekend. A lot of folk, a lot of wonderful, beautiful whiskey folk, a lot of bar flies, a lot of fun, and just food for the soul. I think if I, I I'm going to go through uh, once I've welcomed you guys all, and I'm going to go through a, a kind of few heartbeat moments of the of the weekend. Uh, but I think what I want to do is point you all to the comment I picked up there actually was um, uh, before we went live, I was talking, people were just talking about the festival and throwing it backwards and forwards. Um, if I was to recommend anything that would give you a kind of breathless emotional synopsis of the festival, I would encourage you to go over and read the Dram Face feature that was put out by Doogie Crystal. Um, he runs through the whole weekend very, very quickly. Um, I just wrote it, obviously, as he'd just returned back from the festival, and all the emotions of it all are captured in his piece. I know that for so many of you, you weren't able to get there. I know a lot of you really wanted to be there. Some of you even had to cancel at the last moment. Real Chisholm, I'm look looking at you, my friend. You were dearly missed, and thank you for giving up your seat and managing to get your ticket down to me so that other people could join you. Carlos Sanders, pal, managed to join because of you, and we managed to fill your seat. Phil from Liverpool 
managed to come up and fill your seat on the tasting on the Sunday. So many more of you were like Phil and couldn't make it, but let me assure you that it was so successful, it was such a good fun weekend, that we will be doing it again. It was just fabulous. Anyway, before I get into the topic tonight, before I get into the housekeeping, while you're all pulling up your stools, while you're all pouring your dram, perhaps even a, a cast strength dram, I'm going to jump into the lounge and welcome some of you amazing, beautiful whiskey folk and dedicated barflies. As usual, I'm looking for the orange, so if you're trying to get my attention tonight, the best chance you have is typing Aquaviti or at Aquaviti. Lights up orange for me, and I've got a better chance of picking up your comments. Is it, for example, Whiskey with Molly saying, good evening, Barflies and Roy. Good evening, Ben. Thanks for your help at the weekend. Brilliant to have you. And Gabriel Welding is saying, hello, Roy. Gabriel, you were there too. Great to have you in here tonight, my friend. Andy Cross was also there. Good to see you. Andy Chris Grieve was there. Even Roy saying, David Evans. Didn't make it this time, David, I don't think. He's saying, uh, still think a, a, a Buna holds its own. Going to touch on Abuna tonight, definitely, David. And it still has its fans out there, definitely. Max Kreitner saying, good evening, my friend. Good to see you, Max. Hope you and Christina over in Austria are doing very, very well. And Hell's Wedding saying, evening, Roy. Still looking good, lol. <laughs> well, thank you, Helen. Um, it's just, it's all very strange. And it means that because there's different windows open, I'm a little bit out of sorts. Uh, so, I just not having your usual tech set up tends to throw a wee span on the works, but it should be fine. Gordon Fraser is saying, uh, that's the one I picked up, Gordon Fraser is saying, good old Macs, they just work. Well, the Mac is working for now. <laughs> um, it's the camera that I've got a problem with. Jimmy Jazz, good to see you, Jimmy. How are you keeping, my friend? Good evening, he's saying. Uh, working on a signature vintage cast strength, 22-year-old Linkwood, superb. It sounds like it would be in one of the decanter-style uh, bottles. Andrew Hamaker is saying video is much sharper here. Terrific, Andrew. I imagine that it would be much sharper because, um, you know, we're running Apple to Apple rather than running through cables and things like that that I do with the Canon setup. So it's going to be a wee bit sharper in a lot of respects, but it's to me it just looks a wee bit odd. The video will also be smoother as well, so uh, yeah, we roll with it. Jimmy Lang is saying, looks pretty good, actually. Huggable. Thank you, Jimmy. There were a lot of hugs at the weekend, my friend. A lot of hugs. Julian Rickman saying, even the even butterflies. Looking forward to uh, to a night in the V-Pub. Thank you, Julian. So am I. It's my wee pocket of time out. I hope it is for you too. Nice to have you in. Peter is saying, even the Good to have you behind the bar. Works fine. Thank you, Frank. Missed you at the weekend, buddy. I hoped maybe that you can make next year's. Gary Carew is here. Good to see you, Gary. Slightly shinier, but looking good. Hello, whiskey folk. I, I Maybe there's there are some apps out there and things that I can use to fix the, the things. But tonight... I was caught short and we managed to cobble together this. Video as sharp as a razor, Roy says, Menno Multi-Mission. Thank you, buddy. And Seb K is saying, yo, 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 all missed the past few V-pubs live. So happy to be here tonight from the start. Seb K over in Lisbon in Portugal. Wonderful to have you in, Seb. I hope you're doing well. Falscraft is saying, good evening, Roy. Good to be back from Holland and Ireland. Funny, your mic still works better after the jingle that, than at the beginning. Yeah, it's not the mic, it's software. And it's something to do with just the first few uh, seconds of processing. Uh, it's so frustrating. Um, at first, I was, somebody told me it's actually it's Facebook that's causing the problem. And so I stopped broad broadcasting to Facebook for a few weeks and it seemed to fix it. And then it happened. So I'm now broadcasting on Facebook again. Sorry to everybody who lost me on Facebook for a wee while. But I was just linking to the YouTube stream. I hope you've worked that out. The chat that I interact with was here on YouTube. This is where all the barflies are, where all the members are. It's where the chat uh, is easy for me to follow. We drams come in for Peter Lee. Aquaviti, thank you for inviting me to the festival as a guest. Uh, Denise, Amy and I had a terrific time. The two girls also very much enjoyed the blind tasting. Wish David Ingram a very happy birthday. You're just jumping ahead of me there, uh, Peter. But thank you very much for the drama, my friend. Uh, cheers, as always. And it's a shame that you weren't able to participate just as much over the weekend because of work and things like that. But it's nice to have you in, buddy. And Highland Hamish has bought two, sorry, bought a dram uh, to say, great to walk up the Hamden steps with you, Roy. <laughs> you had your blended kilt on, of course, Hamish. It was brilliant. Thanks for bringing so many barflies together last weekend, Hamish. A pleasure. And it's wonderful to have you there too. And Ruan Fernando, that looks like uh, a new name, Ruan. He's saying one of these days, going to have to visit Glasgow for that weekend. So what if I'm in Canada? Good to see you, Roy, in barflies. <laughs> it's a shame that you're out in Canada, Ruan. I definitely, if you are going to come over, if you're going to make the pilgrimage, it is definitely a weekend to consider. So Highland Hamage, Peter Lee and Druan, uh, here's to seeing you all in Glasgow in the future. Cheers. A bit more local for Hamish, of course, just up the road in Inverness. Dan, Dan Thompson is saying a few minutes late, even all, even Roy. 
no such thing as being late for the, the VPUB, Dan, but thank you, my friend. And uh, uh, Orange Rule is here saying good evening, Roy, and all you barflies. Good to have you in. I hope you're keeping well, Roy. And uh, yes, I hope you caught my me mentioning who picked up your festival ticket and your tasting ticket. Justin Wan is saying good morning. Dry pub for me as I'm getting ready for work, says Justin. And Sandro Fatsalari says good evening, Roy. Uh, all is fine, ciao. <laughs> uh, everyone hope the weekend was great. The weekend was great, Sandro and Justin. I'm sorry that you've got to do go off and do a shift, buddy, but pick it up on the replay, won't you? What's going on, Jim? Jim? How do you all? How do you, Roy? I would, is it wrong to call you the leader of the Hallian Battalion, eh, Jim? Uh, it was fantastic to have you and the, some of the, the Hallians there, not just from Northern Ireland, of course, now, but you're stretching, aren't you? Your membership runs into the States and into the rest of the British Isles as well. And it's brilliant to have you there. Just checking in briefly to say hello and thank you to all for an incredible weekend and for all the birthday wishes, slanches. So while we've got Jim in, let's raise a wee glass to Jim Ingram and say many happy returns. I wish I'd known it was your birthday at the weekend in advance, Jim. But we know that it is now. Raise your glasses. Uh, light up the chat for our pal, the whiskey novice, Jim over, over Northern Ireland, who was his typical gentlemanly self all weekend and brilliant company too. Many happy re returns, Jim. You deserve it. I'm sipping on the whiskey that inspired this Cast Strength V-Pub series. Get to that in a second. Richard Hall is saying, couldn't make Lag Fest, couldn't make Glasgow Whiskey Festival, but can make a Thursday night snuggle down by the fire with you, Roy. Looking forward to it. Rich Hall, listen, buddy, I know that you'll get here. And if you don't, I'll just need to come down to Nottingham night, won't I? Um, one of these days, buddy. Regardless, we'll get together. Jeff Whiskey, Jeff was here as well. Brilliant fun. Good evening, Aquavita, and all you brilliant barflies. All recovered, more or less recovered. Uh, the, only, the only mishap I had was losing my voice, of course. Um, but it recovered enough for me to get through the Sunday, Got back to normal a wee bit on Monday, uh, but it's just still a wee bit strained. But I'm fine. Gas drams here. Remember that cast strength can also be as low at forty one percent. Good to see you in, Gav. Uh, it was fantastic. Uh, listen, uh, I'm hoping to do something over on the east coast. There's been a few discussions flying backwards and forwards, Gav. We should maybe hook up and work out what's going to work best. Chris Brown is saying I'll definitely be at Glasgow Whiskey Festival next year. Good for you, Chris. It'd be brilliant to see you. Hey, maybe even get your pal over from uh, from Oregon to join us too. What do you think? Okay, Arnie Tiger is in. Good to see you, Arnie. Just as the chat jumps, I was just doing very, very well with such smooth, smooth chat. And it's gone. Arnie, I just, I, I'm very happy to welcome you in, buddy, but I've, I've lost your comment. Willie Buchanan saying good evening, Roy. Had a great time at the festival. Sorry for uh, our Colin, who had a really bad migraine and couldn't go. Oh, my goodness. Sorry to hear, Colin. Um, that is a big shame, buddy. I, I'm glad uh, that you're, I'm glad that you, Willie, were able uh, to enjoy it as well. It was nice to see the photos of you and Morag with Ralphie. Whiskey with Molly saying it's fair to call Jeff Whiskey head slapper. Ah, he took that very, very well. Obviously, he's the bottle slapper extraordinaire, and uh, we used that to help name his team at the Blind Challenge on Sunday. Max is saying we need a ZZ Top uh, Jim emoji. That's exactly right, a ZZ Top emoji for Jim Ingram. And Whiskey Works Graham has bought me a dram to say, all right, Aquavita and Barflies. Briefly, and to reiterate with Jim, thank you to the community for another brilliant weekend and birthday wishes, wishes slanch it. I'm feeling there's a lot of people going to be coming in just saying hello and then bowing out quietly, having a few days away after overindulging over the course of the weekend. What we have to try and do is obviously bring a wee bit of balance, but when it's so much fun and the energy's high and we're all just having a great time, it's okay to relax. Al McLaughlin was saying, I was the same, lost my voice. Yeah, I didn't do the full weekend like you did. I know, it's just so so noisy in the festival, you're speaking and everything's amplified. And Tim is here, Tim Locks from the States is saying, ahoy from Oban, thanks again to you and Ellen for making the festival possible for me. Akbar's was delicious. You're a gracious host, Slanchava. Tim, my only anxiety with you and so, so many bar flies, so, so many whiskey, the beautiful whiskey folk, is that I didn't get enough time with each of you. The festival is frantic. It's a handshake and a hug and a move on. I, I know that that's like, but that's like for everybody. We're all just kind of moving around the festival tables. I, I hoped at the meal that we'd have a bit more time, but there was a hundred and two of us turning up at Akbar's to be fed. It's it's it was awesome, honestly, but difficult, obviously, to speak to everyone. 
Then the Sunday, you're hoping for a bit of a quieter thing, but there's a structured taste thing, then there's food, and then there's a, then there's the, the bottle share, and then just, and eventually, yes, I do get a bit more time on the Sunday, but you always feel like you've not had all the time that you want with the amazing folk that turn up. Dick Glenn Duncan's also bought a drama as well to say, cheers, you magnificent barfly community and Roy Aquaviti. So many thanks to everyone. Thanks to you, Glenn Duncan. Thank you for your terrific gift. Look, my gift shelf is overflowing from the weekend. I've got art up here. I've got foodstuffs. I've got a fantastic ceramic tile. I've got bottles of whiskey from all over the place. Incredible scenes, incredible generosity, people exchanging gifts from everywhere. It's just fabulous. It's just amazing. Um, it's it's really restores your faith in the human condition. Anyway, let's get the housekeeping out of the way quickly, and then we can roll in to opening some nice cast strength whiskies and me sharing my opinion with you, and also taking you through the evolution of cask strength whiskies over the last few years. I've covered this in two previous V pubs, November 2021. We started off, we did another one in November last year, and of course, there are enough releases and interesting releases round, round about now for me to bring. November cast strength feep up to you now. Jimmy Legs bought us a wee dram to say Angie wanted to say hello. She likes you too. Angie, that's amazing that you were over here for that amount of time. We spent that amount of time to, to, uh, with each other and you still tolerate me uh, to the point that Jimmy's willing to <laughs> buy me a dram to suggest that you like me. Uh, I'm going to raise this dram to Jimmy Leg, yes, but especially Angie. Cheers to you. Thank you. What a terrific woman you are. Dave Barnes is saying, going to clear my diary next year and make Glasgow uh, make Glasgow suffering from FOMO. Uh, listen, Dave, it's just, it's, we're not going to say negative things about it, right? We're, we're just going to be positive because we've made the effort, we've made the journey, we've had a good, a good time and we go home saying, yeah, that was brilliant. So there's always the worry that you're overselling it. And then every year it rolls around and you just think, this is fabulous. This is why I love whiskey. This is why I'm here. This is what whiskey is actually all about. We arrive, we all come together because the whiskey draws us. The whiskey is the klaxon. It's the thing that, that calls us. And we leave realizing that no, it's always been about people. Always. The reason that you want to go back again next year is yeah, the whiskey is a nice fringe benefit. No doubt whatsoever. But it's because you want to get back in that buzz and that atmosphere. You want that that positivity and that elevated happiness that the environment naturally brings. It's not guaranteed. We've got to work at it. We've got to make an effort. We've got to be open and kind and welcoming and inclusive and all of these things. But it's easy around this community. I'm looking forward to next year, Dave, if you make it, be brilliant. On that note, what I'd like to do is make a very, very heartfelt and uh, I mean, I just, I've forgotten in the past, quite honestly, but we need to remember that the people that set this up for us work very, very hard. I'm thinking about the people that put the festival together, the people that's able to make it run smoothly, and the people that bring the colour and the vibrance. I'm thinking about Julie Hamilton, I'm thinking about Mark Connolly, and I'm thinking about Thomas McDonough the three directors behind the festival, the ones that are able to pull it off every year. I'm thinking of all the other people that help behind the scenes. I'm thinking of the army of volunteers that give up their festival to work the festival. That's not an easy thing to do. They're working around, working, running around, making sure everybody has everything that they need, making sure that everyone is hydrated and have, has water. And they're just, there's just an army of them there and it's amazing to see. It's difficult for me to do it, and I'm very, very grateful that you guys all do it. And then I'm thinking of all the exhibitors that turn up, best foot forward, pouring free whiskey for everyone that shows interest, everyone that's polite, and everyone that's patient. It's just a fabulous dynamic and a fabulous space to be in, but it doesn't come without effort. I know this. So to the team, to the army and the exhibitors, Thank you for another fantastic triumph of a festival from all of us. Cheers. These are two different batches of the same whiskey. Put a teaspoon of water in both. 
This is the 2023 release. You can see the color. And this is the 2022 release. You can see how opaque it is. Quite incredible. And I do have a preference. I really do. Gordon Fraser's bought me a dram. No, he's not. He's, he's bought me. Uh, he's celebrating being a member of Barflies for 21 months. And he said, it's always a people. Whiskey is life. I agree with your sentiment fully, Gordon. Whiskey is life. <laughs> it's always the people. It's, we always come away thinking that was fabulous. We had nice drams, memorable drams. We took photos of the drams. But look through your camera camera roll. Photos, <laughs> selfies, group shots, scenes. Uh, it's just the people, the people, the people. The other uh, housekeeping that I've got here is uh, like another couple of birthdays, actually. Uh, I want to say happy birthday to another one of the Hallian Battalion, because I believe that it's Graham Horner's birthday as well. Graham Horner was a, a latecomer. He wasn't supposed to be coming to the festival, but we managed to find him a ticket and he made it. And it was supposed to be a secret, but he turned up and it was the worst kept secret in the world. But he made it and it was fabulous to have him again this year. Graham Horner, you star as a Hallian, you star as a barfly and just a fantastic member of the community. Many happy returns, Graham. I hope you have a great one, buddy. That's Graham's artwork of my two bottles just over the back there that he handed to me over the weekend. Cheers to you, buddy. Happy birthday. And somebody's also pointed out that it's Ian McAllister's birthday. Uh, Ian McAllister, obviously distillery manager down at Glen Scotia. Um, fantastic. Many happy returns to Ian. I hope that Ian is able to step behind the bar with me sometime in the near future in order to talk about everything that's been achieved down there in Campbelltown. But in the meantime, I hope he's getting his feet up and having a relaxed birthday. Happy birthday, Ian McAllister. Cheers. Right. I want to say a wee thank you as well to all my mod moderators. It's been a long time since I've thanked moderators. And I realised it's probably because they're doing such a good job. <laughs> I don't even notice that they're there. I noticed that Helen is in tonight. Helen and Andy often moderate. We've got Sugar Kitty always in. Helen and Andy and Sugar Kitties always seem to be in, looking after the crowd and being polite, sharing links and cleaning things up, doing everything that they do. Also got time for a Dram Gregor, Mike Molasses, and a few others in too. Alistair Gray's just joined us as well. Managed to meet Alistair for the first time this weekend. But thank you all for your support. Thanks to everybody that's here for another Thursday night. 20 minutes in, over, <laughs> let's get on with the topic. Here's the whiskey that kicked everything off. I've actually got three bottles of this in front of me, but let me explain why. It's not the three batches. There are three batches. Um, what do I have here? Okay. This is the 2022 edition of Bernhaven's Cast Strength 12-year-old. And here is the 2023 edition. Now, I had purchased a bottle of this. I bought this. Uh, I bought this one from. I don't know if I got this from Good Spirits. No, I did. I got this from Good Spirits Company. Um, it's been out for a few weeks now. There's still plenty of it around. Uh, it's gone up a wee bit in price from its first release, but it's still about eighty pounds a bottle. But this was the bottle that kicked off and inspired this whole series back in November 2021. And what I did in November 2021 is go back to the the origins of Cast Strength Whiskey and the original. Uh, official release of Cast Strength Whiskey, which of course goes back to the 1960s, is Glen Farkless 105. And from there, how other Cast Strength releases have come on board. But it's remarkably much slower than we might imagine. I've got some stats that I'm going to share with you on that. But we talked about the rise of the enthusiast, the rise of the demand for natural Cast Strength Whiskey through clubs like SMWS founding in the 1980s, etc through single cast bottlings, through independent servicing enthusiast. That's still very, very strong, strong as it's ever been. It's difficult in these challenging times because of price and everything. But also what we're finding is that the official, and that's what I'm going to focus on tonight, the official distillery releases, the official bottlings, the... Um, original distillery releases, however you want to refer to them, the branded products are the ones that I'm going to focus on because that's where we've seen the real growth. The single cask releases from independent bottlers, that's still happening. 
independent bottlers are also bringing out small batches and lower ABVs and doing everything as well. But generally speaking, when you bottle a single cask, more often than not, it comes out at cask strength. Cask strength is defined, but it's sometimes a little bit nebulous. If you look at a, a bottle label, it'll sometimes say cask strength when it's actually a vatted strength. It might have been diluted to meet a consistent ABV or a desirable ABV. It might say batch strength. There's various ways to look at this. And tonight, I don't want to dwell too much on it. I'm going to look at core range expressions that fit that higher ABV profile, whether it's referred to as cast strength or batch strength or not, but something that's up higher ABV in order to bring much more vibrance, much more flavour. Gavin from Gav's Drams, he pointed out a wee bit earlier, and he's quite right, that you can get cast strength as low as 40%, 41%, because cast strength does not mean necessarily high ABV, although that is typically the case. It means whatever strength is the natural strength in the cask. The whiskies I'll share with you tonight, some of them say cast strength on the label and some of them don't. The ABVs are generally in the realms of what we consider to be cast strength. And that's the way I'm looking at it for the course of this evening. Seb is saying, I love it. It was my vote for number one in the Oswiz. Prefer the 2022 to 2021, but haven't tasted the 23 expression yet, but have it stuck in Scotland. Going to pour the 22, 2022 now. So let me tell you then, Seb, I've almost finished these. The 2022 is the really opaque one. This is really full on leather and rich dark fruits and tobacco and all the really intoxicating, heavy, aromatic sherry notes that we love. It was a full on sherry bomb and one that I love. This is 2022 is actually my second bottle of it. It was heavily shared and people loved it. I suspect that the 2022 release is how it managed to get nominated for the Oswiz this year. 2021 was a different prospect. It was quite a contrast. It was not a bad whiskey, but if any of these looking at the Boone having 12, and imagine, imagining that the cast strength 12 year old is just going to be an amped up version of that. There was quite a departure for me. 2022 uh, redressed that and it really did bring that really full on sherry forward, amped up version of the standard Boone Haven 12. Fantastic. This one, from what I can gather so far, and the reason I'm not opening my bottle, the reason I've got this bottle open, like I say, I already had this, is because Ellen who's probably our furthest travelled barfly at the weekend. She's originally from the States. It's got her name on the top of the bottle there. She's originally from the States, but she's uh, now a uh, res resident in Nepal. And she made it for the Glasgow Whiskey Festival weekend. And the bottle that she brought along with her uh, was this 12-year-old. Um, and you can see it's already been heavily shared there. It's, it's quite far down. I've managed to get my sticky fingers all over it. But there's a th good third of this left, and it means that I get a chance to try it without opening the fresh bottle that I purchased. Thank you, Ellen. But this, for me, is a shift back in the direction of the original one. Not quite as far. There's still more sherry-forward notes in this eh, than the original one, I would say. But this has gone back to that kind of salty, coastal, malty style of Bunahaven. It's got a little slightly drier for me, ever so slightly drier, slightly sharper, maybe a little bit more detailed. You could suggest that there's kind of more to pick out in this. I've loaded this now. I've put a, a big dollop of a, a, a Ralphie teaspoon of water in both of these. Um, and I, that it has really helped it come together. It's, it's helped it kind of freshen up and round out a little bit. But I would say that this is a much more kind of saltier coastal take on that sherry style. My preference would be a nudge in the direction of the 2022, but it's still a cracking pour of whiskey, no doubt about it. Anyway, back in 2021, when the first release came out of this, the 2021 release, that is what inspired me to start talking about cast strength whiskies on the V-Pub. So let's line the three of these up here. You'll notice if you're joining in the live chat tonight, if you're participating live, there's a poll at the top of the live chat. If you click on that poll, you've got the ability to vote for one of four bottles. 
Now, I'm probably going to open maybe the top two, the top three, but it's going to help me get through because I've got eight bottles here to open tonight, and, I, and there's no way I'm going to open and drink eight bottles of cast strength on a Thursday night. I'm going to limit it to four or five. So that's two or three maximum from each group of four that I'm going to put forward for you to vote on. So I've kept these ones, these ones go out first, and I've kept the more kind of peaty style ones for the second batch. So there's lots of whiskies to talk about tonight. If you want a sneak peek and you want to stay till the end, I'm quite happy to do that with you. I've told you what these are in the poll to, so far. We've got Benromax cast strength. Those of you with eagle eyes will realise it's last year's vintage. There's a good reason for that. We've also got Clydeside's limited edition cast strength X bourbon casks. You can see, you know, my flavour profile, right? My cast style. We've also got Coquerin's bourbon cask, the one I picked up when I was down in Campbelltown. And we've also got the brand new Indri Drew. This is their cast strength take on that Indri that's really been getting people buzzing over the last year. I even made a nomination in the Oswitz. The next four, and I'll put another poll up a wee bit later, I've got Toravek, which is their Oglean, which is their uh, standard uh, part of the Legacy series, but they've released a cast strength version of it. And they've written on the label here that that is going to be the last release of that outturn. More about that a wee bit later. We've also got the latest release from Arden Merkin's Cast Strength series, the 2023 release. And we've also got a Cast Strength version of something that I know that you guys love out there, the peated release, PX maturation or PX finish from Glasgow Distillery. So this is their 1770 at a whopping 60.6. .6. The other bottle I've got here, I'm saving right until the end because... The last bottle is the bottle that all other cast strengths tonight will be judged by. I have previously suggested to you on the cast strength V-pubs that the best value out there was Glen Farkless 105. That's not true today. There is something else that I think is the king of cast strength when it comes to value, availability, quality, engagement, all the things that we love. And I'll share that with you at the end. But it's the thing that I'm going to judge everything else by. In terms of value, of course, the profiles will vary hugely. Wonderful to have you all in. I'm going to keep my wee bit of havens, my 2022-2023 release, put it to the side, and I'm going to follow your instructions. You're clearly telling me that the one that you want me to open first is the Benromac cast strength. An Oswin nominee this year, loved by the community. Uh, if, any, if anybody want to ask me which in Romac, I'm going to recommend to them, despite the variations and the, the wonderful range they've got through their contrast series, uh, I would probably always recommend to an enthusiast their cast strength release. Why? Because I think it is the most quintessential take on Ben Romac. Look at the colour of that. Very rich, dark colour. They take from what you want from that, but enjoy it. Savour that colour. Why? Because, I'll try and make this focus. Look at what it says on the side there. Natural coloured, non-chill filtered. And this is specific bottling of 21 casks. It also goes further than that. It tells us that it was distilled in 2012, so this is a vintage. All the casks are taken from 2012 and bottled in 2022. There is a, a batch four 2013 vintage out there right now that you can buy today. Why have I bought the 2012? Well, I didn't buy the 2012 last year. And when I went on to buy a Benromic cast strength, this was available on flash sale. This cost me less than £60, just as a dram comes in from Justin Dram to say, on behalf of Rick Johnson, remember, hit the like. On behalf of Rick Johnson, have I missed something? Um, and thank you very much for reminding everybody to hit the like. Remember, the like is uh, it's incidental, but YouTube seems to like it. But if people are dropping into the VPUB, especially when it's such long-form content, um, they need a bit of encouragement to use the chapter markers to skip through and 
and work out that it's valuable content and uh, uh, the likes certainly help that. So thank you, Justin. Thank you, Rick. And thank you, everyone, for hitting the like. Cheers. It's, uh, it's quintessential Ben Romack. It's the best way I can describe it. Ben Romack has this kind of strange mix of heady, farmy notes and a kind of odd, dirty, industrial note all at once. It always kind of makes me think of a kind of creosote thing. I'm, I always get tool shed. I get this kind of grimy side of things. It makes me think of rust colours. It makes me think of a, 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 an industrial, busy working environment. But also there's a, there's a kind of slightly funky edge that would maybe take you towards a farmyard. And amongst all of that, this one, you've got you've got that fruit. You've got some dark fudge, some maybe treacle fudge, that kind of thing, treacle toffee. But you've also got quite kind of dark fruits, dates, orange oils. I'm sticking my nose right in here, a cast strength whiskey, 59.6 ABV, of course, if you wanted to sit and really dial into it and really analyse the thing, you would be wanting to play with water and take things down, give your senses a bit of a break in things. But as enthusiasts, we love the intensity. We love unpacking. We love just going driving straight in. And we want, we want to feel all of our senses uh, fired. We want to feel that full cast strength hit. So always I tend to have my first sip or two neat. Full on, rich, layered, dense. It's going to be a word that you hear a lot tonight, dense. That's what the higher ABV brings. What's crazy is that, and I want to say this at the outset, when you are an enthusiast and we drink these cast strength whiskies as enthusiasts, whether it's alone or together, one of the odd, ironic things that happens is that the cast strength whiskies slow you down. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that you would look at the high ABV there and think, oh, that's really going to be dangerous and it's going to, I've got to be careful with that. No, the, the whiskey will help you be careful. These high ABV whiskies, whether they're cast strength or whatever, they are easy to slow down with because it only takes tiny sips, half sips, and they're so potent and powerful that every single sip will register. It will, it will claim your attention at every single sip. If you're sitting there sipping an easy, smooth, dare I say, 40% whiskey, suddenly you start just drinking. You just drink. And you start to, it starts to not grab your attention. It starts to just become something that drops into the background and it may be the social situation or the movie you're watching or the book you're reading, whatever it is, that steps forward. And you can just absent-mindedly drink lower ABV whiskies. I'm speaking about myself here, I suppose. But when it's cast strength and higher ABV, when it's a flavorful whiskey, say, when it's got a bit of that power and density and grip about it, when it has that engagement offering as part of the value proposition, you will slow down. So ironically, higher ABV whiskies help you consume less. It's odd. It's odd. Now, it's not one size fits all. It's different for everyone. We should all be very mindful of how our bodies react to alcohol generally. We do not all uh, act in this, uh, uh, react in the same way. But for me, cast strength seems to be the way to just take a wee sip to the couch and I can sit there the whole night with it. You'll also notice that on the VPUB tonight, because they're cast strength, because I've got a lot to get through, I'm pouring tablespoons. We really want to keep it neat. First few sips. Mm. Clove and clove oil. Wow, a lot of clove. <laughs> 
it's just I paid fifty nine or fifty eight pounds for this. It's it's on sale here and there online. And for that value, this presentation of whiskey, vintage statement on there, it is age dated. And Benromac do not do this across their core range, but they do on the, the cast strength. They tell you it's natural colour and unchill filtered. They've got all the details on there, full transparency and great value. Just Benromac, more of this, please. Can't let it go. I've got to say it. You're 10, you're 15, you're 21. Bring it up to 46%. Stop chill filtering it. Bring us that natural as well. This whiskey is too good to dilute. This whiskey is too good to take anything away from. Love it, love it, love it. This stands up to the benchmark that I'm going to share with you at the end of the night. And I know you love this whiskey too. Hello folks, says Craig Dollier. I'm a wee bit late. What a weekend it was, eh? Fantastic, Craig. Wonderful to have your support. Wonderful to have you organised. Never and Craig took care of the buses. He took care of the restaurant and everything. And I could see at the end of the day, kind of when, it, when the job was done, he could relax a wee bit. We're going to do it a wee bit slicker next year. It's a lot. When, you know, once somebody said to me, it's just a funny, funny line. Remember that time that a hundred of us went out for a curry? <laughs> it's exactly what happened. But we're going to, hopefully, if that's going to happen year after year, we're going to have to find ways to streamline it. Seb Casey just poured the 2023-2013 vintage Benromac 59.7. Yeah, this one is 59.6, I think. So it's almost the same. 59.6, yep. And Seb is saying, also getting metallic tool shed, farmyard funk, and slightly lactic sour, gone off milk style notes. Funky indeed. On the nose, I'm not getting, lactic is a common thing in whiskey. I understand that, that, that kind of, uh, sometimes it can come across as something that adds to the whiskey and sometimes it can detract from the whiskey. I know, I think it's a wee bit like uh, sulfury notes in whiskey or savory notes. Some people take to it, some people don't. I think I'm less sensitive to it than most and I'm not picking up much of it in this at all, Seb. maybe just by power of suggestion, a hint in the background, but I wouldn't have noticed it under my own guidance. No, this is a wee bit more spicy and clove. It's, it's, it's lovely, 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 lovely whiskey. It's the type of whiskey that if you bought an SMWS, an independent or something like that, and this was in the bottle, you'd be, you'd be very, very happy. Oops. Excess to Scotch is in. It's good to see you. We said we got a private tour at Benrolic in the beginning of the pandemic. It was really great. I suppose back then it was had to have to be really quiet. Glad you enjoyed it. It's probably made you a fan ever since, right? Whiskey Butt, that looks like a new name. Benrolic Polish cask is a fantastic whiskey. It says Whiskey Butt at 59.1%. Welcome in. Uh, that's a good tip. Polish cask. I've seen it uh, floating around online. Haven't seen any in the flesh. Wonderful stuff. Okay, good. Let's keep it going on a wee bit here. So, I've shared my first whis whiskey with you, but what I want to do is take you through some stats because I think that these are quite uh, interesting stats, <laughs> or at least I hope they are. I hope they're interesting to you to share because it kind of grounds and gives us an idea of what cast strength whiskies are all about. So I'm going to bring in a couple of things to show you here. Uh, just to show you why uh, we've got such a compelling range in 2023 of these relatively, in terms of a phenomena, it's pretty new. Let's bring this in, and I'll just start sharing this with you. It's I share it for no other reason than to frame and contextualise most of the comments I'm going to make throughout the rest of tonight, Okay. But we're talking about official distillery cast, uh, cast strength releases. Um, it's very different from independent bottlers doing single cast and things like that because the distillery cast strength releases tend to be quite generous fattings. And there tends to be quite a decent outturn of bottles in order for us all to get a hold of them. As you saw there from the Ben Romac I held up there at the start, 21 casks go into that vatting, which makes a decent amount of whiskey, certainly uh, two, three, four, 5,000 bottles, depending on the size and scale of the casks, a few thousand bottles can be uh, uh, found in, 
21 casks, right? But let's go through the history, how we've managed to get to today. If you consider, if, and, I'm, and I'm separating kind of clumsy here, established distilleries versus new distilleries, because I think it's compelling just to separate them out for this exercise. But by established distilleries, what I'm speaking about here is distilleries that were on the go up until around the year 2000. So if we've got 95 of these so-called established distilleries, we can then see that around 77 of them have what you would decide a core range. Now, more than 77 have released whiskies, yes, but unless it's a regular, widely available release, I'm not counting it. So 77 out of 95 has a core release. But let's look at how many release a cast strength. Let's go back to pre-2000, back as single malt whiskey was just climbing, and we have somewhere in the order of only two official bottlings, Glenfarclas 105, and you'll know the other one is Aberlour's Abuna. There were other releases, but not much in the way of regular releases. They were mostly from independents, or there were limited special editions that would arrive, they would arrive and then be gone again. Then in a decade that followed, things got a wee bit more exciting. We were joined by a few other releases, and these releases were things such as um, cast strength, things that you've probably tasted and tried in the past, things that you'll be familiar with, such as Ben Romack that I've just uh, opened with you there, but also our Beggs Corey Vrecken, Edrida, uh, the Glendronach cast strength, Glen Goins cast strength, the Freud 10 year old, and of course, the famous, the world famous, and ever so hard to get these days, Springbank 12 came along. So things started to become a wee bit more available, but still, out of 95 established distilleries, only 10 cast strength releases, that's not that much. But today, in 2023, I count, at least, depending on how you define them, we may disagree on what we define as a kind of cast strength release from the range. But I have found 19 of the 77 distilleries that are releasing a core range today release a cast strength, 19 of these established distilleries. Let's look at new distilleries now. Um, I'm kind of going by the malt whiskey yearbook for this data like I always do, uh, but you know, there, there are distilleries out there that um, are maybe not included in that 44. Regardless, I think we've found most of the distilleries that have released whiskey. And 15 out of the 25 that have already released whiskey of those 44 new distilleries, they have something that I would already label as a core range. Think of something like um, Arden Merkin's AD. Think of something like uh, Loch Lee's Our Barley, that type of thing. They've got core range whiskies out there. Obviously, pre-2000 and the decade that followed, 20 to 2010, there's nothing happening. These are new distilleries that didn't exist then. But out of these 44, 25 released, that's the number to remember, the 15 core ranges we've got from these guys, 12. Proportionally, that's pretty huge. But it doesn't stop there. This is quite interesting uh, stats for me. The average price of the established distilleries, and I am not including McAllen in this mix. McAllen cast strength is just not included here whatsoever. I don't know who can get that anymore. I certainly can't, and I haven't been able to for years, let's be honest. But even if I could, I wasn't able to afford it. So McAllen isn't included in this. It would knock that average price up quite a bit, no doubt. But the average prices here of these cast strength whiskies, these 19 cast strength whiskies, is just north of £70, £72.50. Now we know that new distilleries are much more inefficient, that they're trying to claim back capital, they have to make money. So we know that we have to pay a wee bit more from new distilleries. We understand this dynamic, don't we? And yet, the average price from these new distilleries for their cast strength releases is considerably less. Considerably less. What's the takeaway from this? Well, I would suggest to you that these new distilleries that are on board, you are already aware. They are after the enthusiast. They are after us. They know that in order to have a credible, enthusiast-facing range in 2023, 
they should probably display their product at cast strength, despite the fact that a lot of it is quite young. More to follow on that with the expressions I'll share with you tonight. Let's look at the combination of the two. So if we add the two together, 139 distilleries combined, we've got 102 in total that have something resembling a core range, quite a decent representation. And here is the combined numbers, or here are the combined numbers. Uh, two, Aberlour and Glenfartus 105 before 2000, 10 before 2010, but spoilt for choice, 31 official cast strength releases today. So there you can see that this is quite a recent thing. This is something that has been forced by enthusiasts, forced by things like, of course, Glenn Farkless being the first, but on the back of that, Pernod Ricard spotting that Aberlaura Abuna could be an option, but then really not doing much more than Aberlaura Abuna. Yes, Pernod also brought us Glenn Levitt Nadura, which would have come out in the 2010 numbers there but not really not much more. What happened is that through the independent bottlers, through the uh, projects like SMWS, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, cast strength uh, releases from Signature Vintage, cast strength releases eventually from Gordon McPhail, through all of this and the market demand for that, driven by enthusiasts, we've seen this growth, this demand. What say you? Rick Johnson has bought me a dram to say, with everything that's been going on, going on over the last week, I'm so impressed you found the time to research the data for these uh, cast strength chaps. Roy, worth a dram. Uh, thank you, Rick. Everybody knows, Rick, and I'm sure that you're coming around to it too, that I am a, a, an obsessive <laughs> and I think about whiskey all the time. <laughs> and it frustrates my friends and family, no doubt. But it's nice to have you here buying me a dram and appreciating it, Rick. Thank you very much. Cheers. And well, it's a good pour, a very good pour. So let's see, what say you on the, the thing I pour next as I pick up some of your comments here? Oh, wow. So this this was in last place when I started this poll, but it's blown through uh, uh, this the, into second place. We're at Bourbon Cask territory here from Campbelltown with the Kilkerran eight-year-old uh, 2023 release. Yeah, I just can't get the white balance right. All the whites are kind of this creamy colour. Nothing's, no, well, that's quite white, isn't it? It's not bad. That just seemed a wee bit off there. That seemed, this label is very white, but it looks cream in the camera. Anyway, that is what it is. I need to upgrade my iPhone, I think, uh, in order to control the white balance. Let's get this wee Campbelltown and this is one I've, I've tried when I was in Campbelltown, loved it. It was easy choice for me just to go straight to the to the shelf and pick up. There was one sherry cask left on the shelf, the last sherry cask. And I bought this one. Okay. There we go. Let's try and remember the order. Only a wee drop left in the Benromac. Let's go for this Campbelltown Glengyle. Again, quite a small pour. It's cast strength after all. 55.8% ABV, this one. Fully matured and ex bourbon. Now, I'm not reviewing these whiskies. I always have to caveat this. These are neck pours. I'm uncorking straight into the glass, hardly giving them any time to breathe or anything, which is not ideal if you're going to analyse the whisky fully. But if you're just enjoying whisky, don't sweat it. You don't need to follow all of these rules. All of these rules are in place as kind of guides in order for you to try and maximise and get the best out of whiskey. But we can all relax a wee bit with it, and if we're just drinking, it's fine. If I was going to review, oh, this is so fresh. If I was going to review this whiskey, I would be pouring it and sitting and leaving. I would be bringing water and I'd be playing with it. I'd pour another dram, maybe do the same process on more than one night. But just hanging out with you is just a pleasure. So therefore, it's first impressions. This is so fresh and clean. On the back of the Bin Romac, this Glengyle is lifting everything and brightening everything up. It's hardly floral, <laughs> but what you can say about it is that there is a kind of bright outdoor freshness about it. So there is a nice wee kind of cool breeze, a bit of cool fresh linen, that kind of thing. But I wouldn't say it's a floral whiskey. 
The fruit here is sweet pear, some apple, and light citrus, light citrus, lemon, sharp orange, that kind of thing. There is a, an, an oiliness to it. There is a wee bit of grunge here. There's a wee bit of weight. Typical, that kind of Campbelltown depth, if, if for want of a better word. I hesitate to use the word funk in this context because while it's there, it's very light, it's soft. This does not nose like an eight-year-old whiskey. This nose is more mature than eight years old, my goodness. Okay, I think we can just stop there. I've enjoyed tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is the same impact this whiskey had when I was in Campbelltown. Why, 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 why are there not more ex-bourbon cask? But why are there not more whiskies presented like this? My goodness, this is right up my street. This is my lane. This is the type of whiskey that gets me excited. This not this bottle won't last long on my shelf. This will get rinsed very quickly. The other two presented their power. The Bunas, the Ben Romac, presented their power, presented their weight, their boldness. Twelve years of maturation on the Buna Haven, nine years on the Ben Romac. This Coquerin is the youngest of the three, yet it tastes and presents the most mature in a very, very compelling way. The ABV is still high, 55.8, not much down on the other two. Mm. Sweet patisserie, some lemon drizzle cake coming in now. Almond. The pear and the apple. Is 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 uh, it's okay? It's a wee bit orchardy, but I think the fruit here is much more aromatic, like sweet melon, cantaloupe, gallia melon. The, on the palate, all the fruits have gotten much sweeter. So together, so rounded, so so, just just so. The floral thing I was picking up, it's not floral, it's its like a wee bit of a, a wood polish or something maybe. It's like a, a, I don't want to suggest solventy, but it's fresh, it's like a clean wood polish. Remember, as I've I've already mentioned and caveated, this is just gorgeous whiskey. I could just shut the stream down if it wasn't for all you guys hanging out with me. <laughs> I, would just, I would just go into my corner, put my feet up and sit with this thing and play with it. Um, listen, it's easy for me to get carried away with a coquer and uh, it, it is a bit of a, I hesitate to use the word hype beast. It's not hype, it's consensus. People love it because it's very, very good whiskey. But when you open a bottle like that, you you can't you you can't do anything else but just say thank God for Glen Gyle. You you have to just celebrate that occasionally when the whiskey gods are looking down on us, when luck and fortune comes our way, we will stumble upon a bottle of Cokerin. Whether that's a cast strength version like this, whether it's a twelve or a sixteen, whether we pick up a Campbelltown Loch, which has got a good dollop of Coquerin in there, we are able to sip and enjoy it. In the future, there will be more available because they did add extra staff. They did run uh, the malting floors in parallel rather than take the team away. And so they are able to, without changing anything in terms of process down in Campbelltown, they are able to make more Springbank and more Coquerin, but it's going to be a while before we get a hold of that. Since 2018, so we're five years in. So another three to four years, hopefully, we'll start to see some more eight-year-old cast strength out there. 
and I heartily recommend that you seek it out. You're going to struggle to get it. Don't pay over the odds. Don't go to auction. Don't pay silly prices. Go to auction if it's fair pricing, of course. But the reason it's so compelling is the price point. I think I paid 60 quid for this. Similar to the Bin Romac, quite a bit cheaper than the Bin, the bin of Haven, which is older. Ridiculous complexity and detail in there. Makes me want to grab my tasting notebook and just sit with it, but I won't because we've got whiskies to get through. A few, quite a few whiskies to get through. Ryan Sutherland is in, good to see you. Ryan Greg's Whiskey Guide in Paris is in. Stephen Gibson's here, No Nonsense Whiskey Vin. So there's Ryan uh, Sutherland, uh, No Nonsense Whiskey Vin, both met you over the weekend. Uh, Greg's with Greg in Paris and Stephen Gibson, yet to meet you, but maybe in the future. Chris Polak is here. Could you please check the bottle code of the Coquerin for me? Well, I can, but I can tell you that it's the, the bourbon cask. is It's going to tell us, it's going to say eight-year-old Coquerin, uh, 8th of November, 2022, bottling for this. And it's the code is 22 slash 232. I'll try and but let's phone focus on that. Can you just maybe see it there? That's St. Kilkeren. There you go. You can see the, the date code there, 28, 11, 22. So, I mean, okay, it's a reasonable outturn. There's a good chance that it'll spill over and it's not, it'll be bottled in multiple days. I'm going to suggest that this entire bourbon cast matured at 55.8% ABV release is all going to be from the same fatting. Chris. Chris Banks Wildlife is in. I still have two bottles of the 57.1. Love this whiskey. 57.1 was the Rechar uh, Sherry cask. A very, very different prospect from this, Chris. But yeah, Kilker, an eight year old in a tall, narrow bottle, the famous 57.1. Yeah, that got a lot of people really excited, Chris. So terrific to hang out with you and June at the weekend, too. Brilliant stuff. Yeah, my son had his hot chocolate on an otter coaster this evening and loved it. Chris Pollack is saying thank you. It confirms I got the same release. Terrific, Chris. Terrific. Let's clip on. There's a lot of whiskies to get through tonight. Um, what's up next? Okay, I've got this one. This is ex-bourbon cask as well. Clydeside Distillery, 60.6% ABV. This is their limited edition release. A lot of people were unsure about Clydeside because their first ever release, their inaugural, was just a wee bit too tapped, sharp, young, jaggy. It was all elbows, knees, and ankles. However, trust me, they've moved very, very quickly in a couple of years. Would it be nice to open that one tonight? Maybe that's just going to have to wait for a future repub. You guys seem to want me, only by a couple of percent, to open this Indri. Now, I did promise you that I was going to talk a little bit about the weekend to recount how fantastic it was. But I had I love to do the Aquavita Blind Challenge as a live team game format when everyone's together and we managed to squeeze 60 people into the event. I'm so sorry for those that couldn't make it, that were not able to get in. I know how disappointed you are. It's difficult because I need to be able to do these things legally. I need to have a space that can allow me to do that. Um, and I need to uh, basically go by how many people we can fit safely into that room. We managed to fit 60 people into that room this year. And I shared a Bin Romac Contrasts, the peat smoke and sherry, Kuboken 15-year-old, a vintage Laphroaig, the duck egg blue seal, the one I opened on here with uh, John uh, Campbell, interestingly enough. We got two bottles of that, managed to vat them together vat them together, vat. I managed to marry them together eh, in order for everybody to be, to, to be drinking the exact same bottle. I also sipped it alongside, I'm going to forget one now, turntable, smoke and riff, blended scotch. And the fifth in the lineup was Indri, the 46% Trini three wood. Now, it was all over the place. It really was. The Lefroy came last. So 40% ABV, and because it's been 20 plus years in glass, it's softened out a wee bit. It's a very specific style of whiskey that certain people seek out. I'm one of the people that seek it out, and I love that style of whiskey. But it's not for everyone. A lot of people are looking for a wee bit more oomph to their whiskies, and the rest of the whiskies brought that. So I think the, st the stretch and scores were like 17 points for Lefroig, and then it was 30 points for what came fourth, and 36 points that what came first. 
going from memory. Um, so it was very, very close. The top four were very close together and it was a bit all over the place. But the one that came out on top and the one that got the most comments over the course of the day was the Indri. The Indri Trini. Now we know this to be natural colour because it tells us on the bottle natural colour. It tells us it's non-chill filtered. It tells us it's cast strength. Indri Drew. This is their cask strength release. Let's get some fingerprints off this bottle so I can show you it. I didn't buy this. I did not buy this. But I did not get it from Indri or an agent of Indri either. I went to the Good Spirits Company. They said, yes, we can get this for you. It's £80. I looked everywhere else. £80. It's the price for this cast strength version. So it's quite a jump up from the £40 to £42 for the standard version. So I decided no. So we bit pricey at £80. Crazy, I've just spent £80 on the Buddha Haven, right? But regardless, I said no. Let's not bother. And then Stefan, my friend Stefan Novak from Frankfurt, from Germany, came over to the Glasgow <laughs> Festival at the weekend. And he's unbeknown to him that I was looking for it, he packed this cast strength through for me. And it's a gift from Stefan. Stefan, regardless of what I think of this whiskey, my friend, you are a superstar. Thank you so much. Cheers. Oh, wow. I need to start buying and reviewing average whiskies and poor whiskies. <laughs> Is it going to be the case that everything I'm going to open, I'm going to go, my goodness, that's amazing. I have a theory why that is. Let's pause for a second and talk about it. <laughs> Glasgow Whiskey Festival was rammed. And I don't just mean with the people there, the barflies and the community and everybody that would normally be at the festival. I'm talking about exhibitors. Every single piece of wall space was taken by a table and an exhibitor. So much so that they even put exhibitors in the back area, the adjoining area that looks over the football stadium, in the back where there would normally be food or catering. There was exhibitors in there. It was so full. And yet, there were no exhibitors from Pernod Ricard, no Chivas Brothers at all, no exhibitors from Diageo. So that's the top two producers with over 40 distilleries between them and Scotland. They were not there. Grants were not there. Beam Suntory, to my memory, were not there. I don't think they were there. If they were, they were like Edrington and they were only there through their distributor. All the big producers were not nowhere to be seen. See if you can see if that aligns with the content on the VPUB over the course of the last years and the content on the VPUB this very evening. It is remarkable and shocking how little representation we, how little engagement we have with the, with the biggest producers out there. And I think it's heartbreaking because the distilleries behind those biggest producers are some of the best distilleries that we have in the land. Speaking about Scotch here, of course, this is almost always in the context of Scotch. The only departure from Scotch that we're going to have is this Indri I'm sipping with you. But I think it's remarkable. I also think that when I'm buying these cast strength whiskies, I'm not just scattergunning. I'm going on recommendations from you. And I'm also going on the pedigree of previous releases from the producers that I'm sharing with you tonight. And the pedigree of this injury has been compelling, not just because it won the blind challenge at the weekend, but because of how many bottles I've got through. Indri were giving out free bottles to influencers and things. I didn't take any. I was never offered any, honestly. I've been buying all the injuries because at 40 quid a bottle, 42 pounds, it is so compelling and offering. I put my nose in this. The first thing I get is just a big whack of, you might consider it very close to a kind of bourbon-esque uh, nose and flavours. So a big whack of soft bacon spices, yes, but sweet oak forward, maybe a whiff of solventy in there, things that make it stand out and not as not scotch. 
it's very bourbon like but there's something there that 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 gives away that this is not a bourbon and it's a mushy overripe banana it's an overripe mango it's a it's something ripe it's not tropical fruit it's not fresh bright tropical fruit it's it's overripe dense fruit we've got a polish definitely very very wood very very oak forward but remarkably soft and gentle this abv on this 57.2 we've missed 100 proof by 0.1 Cheers, everyone. Here's the, to my first sip, first proper sip of this injury. Spice, spice, spice. Where's all that fruit I got in the nose? Where's all that tropical fruit? It's there. It's going into guava, bitter guava. Lots of spice, bags of spice, all that ABV, all that, all that grip, all that, all that jagged detail that was hidden on the nose is just, it's just launched at you on the palate. Very potent. This is exactly like Indri, the Indri Trini, but jacked up, and I, I suspect some of the more. Uh, sweet notes dialed down so the, the soft rounded side of injury the the thing that made people come up and say people come up to make the taste that weekend and said i've tried injury before and i didn't like it but i put it as my favorite tonight and i'm loving it it's so so that it's so important that we that we find ways to try things blind but i feel that this is much more direct and straightforward Whereas the Trini is a wee bit more kind of rounded out and crafted, a wee bit more softened. It's still there, it's still sitting there. Wow. 80 quid is a lot. I think 80 quid is pricey and I think I'm a wee bit nervous about the price. Why? Because I think it's a wee bit pricey. But I need to caveat it. I think maybe the price of this cast strength version is pricey because of how good a bargain the three wood, the Trini is. I'm a wee bit worried that the Trini is going to start ramping up in price and maybe it was a loss leader just to get the name out there in the market, have everybody talking about it, seeing how great it was, and then they can reap, uh, start to make a bit of profit a bit later. Maybe it was undersold in the beginning. And when they bring out a cast strength at £80, this is their way of testing, their appetite testing the water. Here's the caveat. Put this in front of me. Tell me how much I'd be willing to pay for this, this experience in a glass. And I'd have to say, if you were telling me it was £80, I may, may be very tempted. This is the crowd pleaser cast strength whiskey, no doubt about it. The sweetness, the fruitiness, uh, this the approachability, the fact that it hides its ABV so well on the nose and on the arrival, amazing. Let it sit on your tongue, swish it around your gums like I did there. All the spices, everything starts to prickle and tingle. This is a good whiskey. Stefan, I'm very glad to have that whiskey. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. 80 quid. I wonder what you paid for it in Germany. I think you might have told me. So we've done okay in terms of time. We've got through three whiskies. Buna Haven started us off well. It's four whiskies. <laughs> Buna Haven started us off well. The Ben Romack, Cracking, Kilkerran, Sublime, Indry, Rich. Good stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take down that poll. I'll need to save the Clyde side for another future VPUB. And I'm going to put up what our next 
whiskies are going to be and ask you to vote again. It's a wee bit boring for you. 418 votes. Thank you all so much. It's a wee bit boring for you while I type this out, but I think it's going to be interesting. Toravik, Altglian, Cast Strength. So I'm just going to put in here. And the ABV on this one is very high. It's 61.1. Then the next one that you're going to be voting on is Ardna's new 2023 release, the new AD. Slightly different branding. I hope there's a batch code on this somewhere. Are we going to need to do a spring bank and use the the ABV here, Ardemarkin? Come on, give us a batch. No batch code on the front, no batch code on the back. I can see that's a blunder. 58.1% ABV, maybe we're going for... It's not hard to put a batch code on it a year, is it? Okay, we've got the Harden up next. And then we've got a brand new from Glasgow Distillery. We're very familiar with their PX peated, uh, sorry, peated uh, release. This is the cast strength version of that. It's been a very popular whiskey in my house, the peated uh, cast strength, sorry, the peated uh, 1770, the standard uh, PX uh, finished bottle. And I always get through it very quickly because it's a very good, sweet, cast forward crowd pleaser. But this one is at 60.8% ABV. Sixty point eight. Okay, and I'm not going to put. No, I will. The best value cast strength bar none. I'll just put it in there on the vote. I know that what you're going to vote for because you all want to know it. You all want it to have it to, to to for it to be revealed. So I'm going to go off what comes after the best value cast strength bar none, and that's what's going to be poured next. See how the chat's going with all of you guys. Rod Graham, Rod, he's in saying so true. Re blind tastings. I still remember with chagrin that my faith from last year's blind challenge was the non scotch. I remember Roddy coming up to me. Roddy, it's nice. It was great to see you. In. I remember Roddy coming up to me uh, and holding the glass and up to me and saying, please tell me that this is Scotch whiskey, because he knew there was a non-Scotch in the lineup, and I think he suspected that it might be it. And I tried to keep my best, best fo poker face on and just kind of react in a way that it wouldn't give anything away and just ask, wait for him to reveal. And I looked at Roddy when I did reveal that it was Nika Zuichi that took the blind tasting in 2022. And in 2023, the blind tasting was taken by a world whiskey as well. The, the Nika Yoichi was expensive at £75. So you kind of look at it and go, okay, you know, it wasn't miles ahead of the other ones and we're still okay with the value and the proposition from Scotch. But that Indri this year really, really gave us a fright because it was the, the cheapest whiskey and the world whiskey. Um, and it turned a lot of people on to Indri. Helen is saying not boring. It's whiskey, so it's good. Thank you, Helen. Thank you for your indulgence. Gordon is saying usually beside the QR code. Let's have a wee look. I mean, that's what I was looking for. It just says discover me. I guess I do need to scan the QR code. And you know, I can't scan the QR code tonight because I don't have a camera. So I'm using my phone to broadcast uh, tonight. It's, so I don't have a phone. I hope it's on Do Not Disturb, actually. <coughs> so, yeah, that's a misstep by Arden Merkin, uh, not putting a batch code on there. That's uh, It's kind of whiskey geek stuff 101, my goodness. Maybe they're not always going to be 58.1% ABV, but it wouldn't take much effort to, to, to put on there 2023. If there's a, a reason that they don't, I would like to hear why. And your house, is James sipping as well? No, I'm talking about people that come in the house, Frank. People like you, of course, my friend, of course. 
Uh, MD Fjarda Morkin is in the chat. Anybody Fjarda Morkin in the chat tonight? Uh, Pelters for Aquaviti there, <laughs> says Ron Graham. Jimmy Legge saying, You already had the best cast strength, so I have no clue what you're on about, says Aquaviti. He's obviously rooting for the Coquerin. Jimmy's a bit of a Coquerin fanboy, of course he is. And Greg in Paris is saying, There's also Torovic cast strength release for us, Aquaviti, with a different recipe. Uh, uh, a bourbon barrel all also PX Virgin Oak, but also 61.1. Nice, but different. That does sound a lot different because I th I suspect that this filled at natural cast strength directly from a limited lot of casks without gel filtering, colouring, reduction and dilution. This final batch concludes the Alglian before we begin the next chapter of the series. Toravik. Heavily PG single malt whiskey with concerto malted barley and ingrained fennels content of 78 ppm. That's very high in the malt content, 78. Fermented with pinnacle MG plus yeast and aged in a mix of first fill bourbon barrels and refill whiskey barrels. Bottled without reduction at 61.1% with no chill filtration or colouring and a residual fennels level of 22.8 ppm. Wow. So the residual fennels, the peat in the bottle, measuring 22.8, is one of the highest I've ever seen published, printed. It's very high. A lot of peat still in there. Fantastic. It could be the last one. If I'm going to open it, it should be the last one. Anyway, I've still to share with you, um, of course. I'll not only share with you what I think is the best value today, as, as per that poll. Let's see how the poll's getting on. Yeah, Elder Merkin's out in front. Uh, it's very close between the Toravik and what I what I suggest I'm going to suggest to use the best value, no or argument to be had, and uh, Glasgow 1770 coming up. That's interesting. The two Glasgow distilleries, the two newest ones, right? They're, hey, I'm maybe not going to get to them tonight. I need to have a reason to open those two. I'm excited by the way the two Glasgow distilleries are going, the direction they're moving in, far faster than anybody is monitoring. I suspect. Great stuff on the horizon. Anyway, it's not going to be your favourites tonight. Looks like I'm going to be opening the, the Ardemark and the Toravik, and then a bit later tonight, what I suggest is the best value to you. Um, but I'm also going to share with you the distilleries that I'm a wee bit disappointed in for not releasing a cast strength. My wish list of my top five distilleries that I would love to bring out a cast strength expression from them. Falsgraf, good to see you, Klaus. He's saying, funny that, for some reason, I'm, I'm in all those votes today and past in the absolute minority. Kind of an odd one out me. That's okay. We need all the odd one outs. We need them all. It's just what makes this amazing. Sometimes I'm the odd one out, and it's, sometimes it's not a nice feeling. When you're in company and you're tasting and things and you love something and they don't, you get a tasting note and they don't, there's lots of things feel confident and know that you're seen and that, that it's valuable that you speak out. Helen is saying, I, I haven't got the, the latest Ardemarkin cast strength, so Ardemarkin Madeira is Slanchet. Well, Madeira is no shrinking violet and it's gorgeous as well, Helen, as you know. Right, I'm going to just do it. I'm going to take your instruction. Ardemarkin is clearly where you want me to go, so Ardemarkin it is. I always get short fingernails and I always need something to pull out the wee foil tab. I've been saving a lot of these bottles up for a wee while now, but this one I managed to pick up from Good Spirits Company just in the last couple of weeks. Last week, I think. Oh, <laughs> from somebody who suffers from peat blight, <laughs> we're moving into the peaty realms now. <laughs> it's very, it's very peaty in the nose. <laughs> a wee drop of this. 58.1% as I say. Plenty power here from the peninsula. Now, if I had a phone, I suppose I could click the QR code and get the cask makeup. But have a look at the colour. Look at my face through the colour. <laughs> because we know that these whiskies are natural colour, we get to appreciate the colour. We get to play guessing games about what the makeup is about. Is there any sherry in here at all? I mean, I'm not seeing a lot of kind of darker red or uh, kind of magenta highlights that would suggest a wee bit of sherry, maybe. Everything here in this glass tonight is yellow. Everything is gold. Everything is bright copper, amber, as you can see.
Does that lead the notes that I'm going to pick up on it? Absolutely, I think it does. Uh, so, so, so typically, Arna. Honestly, becoming one of the most distinct uh, nose palate experiences that we have in Scotch whiskey today, everything is just takes you right outdoors. Everything is just very overtly, and it's just so easy to say, but you just have to say it if it's true, coastal. Something is chiming. The, the worst thing I ever did was update to Sonoma midway through the week before doing a V-pub. Focus on the whiskey, come on. This is probably one of the most ashy no, uh, Ardemarkin PT noses that I've had. Beach fire, cold ash, doused beach fire, grassy, dry, dry grass. Not a lot of cask influence here, not a lot of wood influence coming forward. This is all spirit. Lemon, lemon oil. Orchard fruit. Pear, hard crunchy pears, not sweet ripe pears, hard pear, fresh pear, apple, green apple skin, bright green orchard fruits. Everything about this whiskey is outside. There's a, there's a temperature to the nose as well. Some people get colour, some people get some people get shapes, some people get all sorts of things when they taste whiskey. But one of the things that, that I often get is that some whiskies to me nose warm and others nose cool. And it doesn't make any sense because obviously all the bottles have been here for days and longer, uh, at least sometimes weeks, and are all very much at room temperature. But this wee whiskey noses cool. Here goes the 2023 Ardna. I'm going to fall out with Jimmy Leg. That's not true. Jimmy Leg's going to fall out with, with me. I think we've gone younger again here. We're now down in the realms of the five and six and seven year old whiskey. And I think that there are elements of this that betray that. But it's so. Something about Ardnamorkin. And it's difficult, I think, to parse out. It's difficult to isolate what it is. So we we go to our kind of whatever taste and notes that we can do. We try and vocalize it and articulate it as much as we can. There is something about Ardna that is unique, that's compelling, that makes us just drawn in, that makes us love it. I didn't notice any mineralic qualities of any sort on the nose there, but on the palate, no question. Slate pebbles, limestone, chalk, soluble tablets, all of it on one sip. Let's go on again. Moorish, drying, crisp, autumnal, this is, if you're going to go out on a autumnal early winter hike, this is the stuff to put in your hip flask. Now, <clears throat> if you were to ask me and compare to 2020, uh, late 2022 release or the 02 2022, the early 2022 release, uh, there was two in the same year last year and then this is the only one this year I believe. I don't, I still have them on the shelf a wee bit, only a wee bit of each, but I'm not going to do a comparison here. This is exactly 
This is exactly what I expect. In fact, the thing I love about uh, about Adam working more than anything is when the f when the wood you know, the cask sits ever so slightly back a bit and lets that Arden Merkin spirit breathe and shout, hence the bottlings that I released from me, the spirit forward bottlings. That's what I love. I love getting the mineralic content to come through. I love that unique thing that Arden Merkin has and it's here and it's here in spades and it's £65 a bottle. What more can we ask for? My goodness, Darth Kermit's, Kermit's bought me a wee dram as well. Uh, no words or anything there, Darth. Uh, but thank you very, very much. Thank you for being uh, here and part of it. Um, one day you will have that T-shirt, and we can spot you as Darth Kelmet when you're in, when you walk amongst us, my friend. Uh, thanks for your dram. Cheers. That's good. Really, really just mm, very, very good. I don't think it's the type of whiskey you can pour for folk that just come in and you want to beguile them and you want to woo them into whiskey. I think there is a bit of, it's not just about the 58.1% ABV. The profile on Arda Merkin is a little bit drying. There's bitterness on the end, all of those things. And yet it is just such a fresh, compelling, unique, detailed, complex whiskey. The future of that, this the whiskey that's going to come from that distillery is going to be in such demand. Malt Monk Justin, you star. Finally picked up my ultimate cast strength world whiskey today. William LaRue Weller from the BTAC range. Five years hunting this unicorn down. Cheers, barflies. Justin, <laughs> I know you're an obsessive buddy, but I know you're passionate and you love the stuff. And I know that you're going to find a way to enjoy it and share it too. Cheers to you, Justin. Brilliant to have you at the weekend. Cheers. Greg's Whiskey Guide saying, the thing I, I like the most about Ardemarkin personally is when it is blended, the blenders are just my opinion. Although the uh, Berry Brothers and Rudd a single cast bottle at WLP was a killer. Greg, it's, it's the type of thing that it's, that's... I feel that I hear what you're saying. It's a team at Marder Market. It's not a single blender. It's the entire team that blends these releases together. So it's 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 a slightly different take on it. But I feel like there is there are few distilleries that are able to bring that DNA through. I wonder how it's going to be even in the future. I know that they're maturing a lot of stuff in refill, which is super exciting to see. Um, but their their DNA just is just makes itself its voice so so known. And J Jim's stayed in for quite a wee while. I know his birthday <laughs> celebrating being a member for forty four months. In slant you all catch you later, Jim. I hope you pick up the rest on the replay. If not, I'll send you a wee message. Cheers, my friend. Happy birthday. Why are we falling out? Because Jimmy, I'm now in a position where. The price point is so close between that Kilkerran and Arda Merkin, and you're looking at the two of them, and I think it would be hard to give one up for the other. The Kilkerran is much more mature, much more together, much more finessed, much more... Uh, you could pour the Kilkerran for people, a much wider profile of people, I think. The Arda Merkin is much more visceral, much more rough and and ready and completely different whiskies and yet difficult to choose between jimmy like is saying oh yes we will fall out fall out over that <laughs> yeah I did, like i said fantastic right what am i pouring next come on let's how are we doing for time one hour 34 there is a very very crunchy quiz tonight i'm just saying that at the outset but then usually when I think it's a crunchy quiz, it ends up being an easier quiz and loads of people do really, really well in it. Uh, what have I missed here? No, I picked it up, Justin. I picked it up. C. Oh, Torah Vek. We're going for the PT stuff. So you want to know what the Torah Vek Toravik is like. So this is Toravik's Algleyan. This is their swan song. They're moving away from, from these, uh, the legacies. Well, I don't know. Maybe the legacy series will continue, but the Altglian or Altglian. 
will no longer uh, go forward. That's what it certainly suggests on the, the PR and on the label. That this cast strength release is the last starting to feel the cast strength repeating on me here. I'm doing okay though. That's the best pop tonight, I think. Uh, Torovate got in touch to offer some uh, some whiskey. They were going to give a sample out, I think a sample to the Dramface team. So I'll let them go ahead and do that. What happens is when they reach out to Dramface is that they, they reach out to me or one of the other editors and we say yes and we deflect it to a reader, uh, sorry, a writer, um, so that there's no, but there's no direct communication in the transaction so that somebody gets it once removed. This Torovake I purchased uh, at the Good Spirits Company and it wasn't too expensive. It was about 65 quid, right bang on average price for cast strength from new producers, new distilleries. Same as Arda Merkin, same as Loch Lee. I did share the Loch Lee cast strength in a previous fee pub. Just a wee drop of this. Right, okay, so I've not put my nose near the glass yet. I didn't nose the bottle. I thought there was a lot of peat in Arda Merkin. This is peat, 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 peaty, peaty. Softer peat. Bizarrely, when I was getting that cold ash from the Arden Merkin, this is a there's a warmth to this peat. Smokier, eh, not savoury. I'm not going in, in close to a barbecue here, but I'm in the realms of a hearth and a, a peat fire. And there's an earthiness to heat to this. So where the Arden Merkin was ashing, this is earthy. So a, a damper, wetter scene here. Thicker smoke, bags, bags, bags of smoke. Lemon, lemon rind, lemon zest, sharp and fresh. Floral, really floral, like um, almost lilies and like a florist scenario. A bitterness, a kind of... Uh, Let's coat the glass a wee bit here. Let's see if it helps us a bit. It's much more obvious, much more direct. Yeah. Not a lot of cask, not a lot of uh, kind of, as, as we know, it's mostly bourbon, ex bourbon and refill. So there's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of the toffee vanilla type notes, but there is. There is a wee bit of desiccated coconut, biscuity, malty. So I'm thinking Nice biscuits for those of you in the UK. And yeah, desiccated coconut. Anyway, lots and bags and bags of smoke. Even drier than the Ardemarkin. This is just pure. This is a peat fest. This is like, this is reminiscent of Wee Beastie. This is, this is just a, this is just a, an absolute blast of peat. So even someone like me that suffers from peat blight, that's, that can sometimes struggle to pick up subtle smoke. And if I'm sipping a lot of peated whiskies, there are, there's even, there are even some whiskies out there that are significantly peated that I've just dialed out the peat smoke. I've just dialed it out. And the reset is really hard because you've got to stay away for a while. You've got to sip lots of unpeated things and, and you've got to kind of work back towards uh, leave, uh, leaving yourself open to subtle peat again. No problems with that here. If somebody put this in front of me and I didn't pick up the peat, eh, it's time to go and drink something else and <laughs> take a step away for a bit. This is very, very peat forward. So think of the peat monsters of the world. Uh, think of peat, uh, what's it called? Uh, Douglas Lane's Big Peat. Think of all these kind of, think of Octomore, which is ironically often 
not that peaty on the palate. Think of all these big things that people are drawn to because of the peat proposition. This whiskey has just got bags of it. Wee bit. Spent fireworks. So you can see it's all kind of has this, this smoky thing I'm getting, but it's not the cold ash beach fire thing. It's not the medic medicinal South Coast Isla. This is like, a, a, there's a warmth to this. And it's salty, my goodness. No salt and whiskey, of course. This is a salty whiskey. I'd say is, I've not had as much salt since I sipped that been a having at the opener. A little bit acidic on the finish. Dry and bitter, acidic, quite sharp. You know this whiskey. If you've tried Toravake, you know what the cast strength Toravake is going to be like. It is pretty true to form, but everything is just dialed up. Oh yeah. I noticed a comment there. I wanted to pick it up because it was from a new name. Don't tell me I've missed it. There it is there. Jumped once more. Danny, I'm coming to you. Sam Tunsell, I think. Hey, Roy, have you uh, tried the new cast strength Deanston Virgin Oak? That might be interesting. Virgin Oak is, uh, is so uncommon in Scotch. Uh, in a previous cast strength V-Pub, I think last year, we featured the Deanston Virgin Oak. At that time, it was the distillery-only exclusive release, Sam. Is it Sam or Kem? Um but more recently, there's, there's a much more widespread Deanston cast strength virgin oak out there. But it has featured before. And Danny Keenan, new star, has bought me a dram. Uh, nice to shake your hand this weekend, Roy and Abon. A fantastic V-Pub as always. Cheers. Sorry, Danny, when you walked up to me, I was like, the brain is rolling. And I'm going, like, I know the face, I know the face. And of course, I'd met you before. And it was it was a nice kind of a uh, wee uh, excellent handshake and garnish to the weekend to be able to shake your hand uh, at the Whiskey Club on Monday night. But uh, extra nice for you to drop in and buy me a dram too, Danny. Cheers to you. Thank you. Okay, I need to get on. I need to share with you the whiskey that all of these cast strength whiskies are competing with. And I think you probably know what it is. If you think that there's a cast strength whiskey out there that I should have mentioned tonight, that's the best value, that's consistent for quality, that you're never going to be disappointed with, that's doing a great job and a just killer fantastic price, say what it is now. Springbank 12, Gordon, unfortunately not. I would love to be able to pick up a Springbank 12 again. I've actually got three open. I opened them all in a VPUB, you'll remember. I'm lucky to have, privileged to have some Springbank 12 that I've been accumulating over the years. But I'm nervous how easy it's going to be for me to get close to it again in the future. It's not featuring tonight, Kel Taylor is saying on the Tour of Ake. Is the Castell, sorry, Seamus heavily peated, double barreled, blended malt a thing in Scotland? Uh, it's, that looks like, is it an Irish whiskey? It's non chill filtered, no colour, 46%, and it's selling for $29 to $30 on the East Coast. Wow, Kyle. Uh, no, that looks like a Gaelic name, an Irish Gaelic name. So it must be Castle Seamus then. Um, I think I might have vaguely noticed the name. It's not something I've tried or been close to or touched upon. And he's saying, and it's amazing. Looks like the specs are good and the price is very attractive. Nice to have you in, Kyle. Chris Banks Wildlife is saying, Roy, have a drink of water. <laughs> and Malcolm Harris is saying, thoroughly enjoyed your company and tonight's content. However, now need to nip off and rob a bank. Malcolm, you make a good point. I am not sharing all of these whiskies for you to run out and buy these. I'm sharing these whiskies to give you my impression in order for you to work out which might be the best place for you to place your money. Money's tighter than it's ever been. I'm opening all of these whiskies. I'm in a super privileged position to go out and be able to buy these because of the support that you give me. If I open them and find that they are not up to snuff and they're not worth the money, then I'm going to say it. I have to say so far tonight, listen, the Tour of Ake is very, very young. It's the most spirit, it's the most forward. Most spirit forward. 
But everything else tonight has been, if we're paying 60, 65 pounds for these whiskies, we're in good shape. We're in good health as enthusiasts. These are not the type of whiskies by price point, by presentation, by name, by brand. These are not the type of whiskies that are going to be attractive, I think, to people just coming in. But with a wee bit of guidance and a wee bit of help, they'll get here and they'll end up in really quite good value, densely flavoured, exciting whiskies. All right, let's get it open. Let me share with you the one that everyone should be purchasing. The one that everyone should be enjoying is the Anxiety Free Open, and I'm saying this, I'm uncorking it, but I've got another bottle there that's already open. It's been open for a long time, and I had an interim bottle that was finished and very much enjoyed. Went down a treat. Do we know what we're, what I'm opening? Gerald uh, Cascania has spotted it. <laughs> yeah, wow, a lot of people not getting it, not getting it. And Gerald is right. I hope it pops because it tends not to make a glug because of the rounded shoulders. This is Aaron's quarter cask. Now, in the past, their cast strength release has been known as the Bothy. But these days, I don't want to spill this, so I'll put the cork back on. This is Aaron's quarter cask. Look at that presentation. Let's marvel at this thing here. Non-chill filtered, natural colour, even some Braille on the label here, which is fantastic. It's got some nice geographical little Easter egg there at coordinates. It's got the Golden Eagles and it's got the island here. Quarter cask, 56.2% ABV. Just terrific value proposition. Barely a five or more expensive than their core range 10 year old. The last clean Glencairn I have. No glug from this, I suspect. Yeah, silent pour from the rounded shoulders. And we have 46 pounds I paid for this cast strength bottle of whiskey. I suspected that it had gone up in price, and it has. It's gone up to somewhere in the order of £50, maybe a nudge or two over 52 54 depending on where you pick it up. Please pay a wee bit more happily from bricks and mortar places. Support the independent bottlers when you can. However, we've noticed that Aaron Quarter Cask can still be picked up. I am not kidding for £45, £46 today. I've had this bottle on the shelf for a year at least, I've had this one on the shelf for a hell of a lot longer. This is a previous rendition, the Bothy quarter cask release. Hey, this one's the ABV was 53.8, so the ABVs do change. Um, and there's another one that was the exact same branding as this, but it did have the Bothy on the label, bizarrely. I think they've just dropped that branding now. Um, that went down an absolute storm, slightly different ABV again. Let's go. Okay, we're out of the peat. We're out of peat bogs. <laughs> we're right back into orchard territory. Orchard fruit, orchard fruit. This is literally like opening a bag of green apples. So bright, so fresh, crunchy. Granny Smith, bright green apples. Sugar, some sugar coming in. Let's coat the glass a wee bit here. Aye. Confectionery sugar, but lemon, confectionery lemon, lemon sherbet, lemon, lemon drops, lemon boiled sweets, a wee bit of, <laughs> uh, so uh, there's a medicinal sweet in the UK called lockets, I've been years since I've had it, but it's menthol, and in the centre is honey, and the, the honey and menthol thing is, is perfect. Hint of clove and a wee bit of spice there, but that's the area I'm in, menthol. And green element too, it's taking me down this kind of fresh nettle and mint thing. It's fresh mint, even spearmint. Amazing. <laughs> okay, £46.
much sweeter. And it is a sweet malt. This is much sweeter than you imagine. All that salt and coastal vibe that I've been on with the previous, the other bottlings are kind of sweetened by this dessert mix of a sweet orange and satsuma and peach and a creaminess. The menthol thing is there, but it's it's light. This is a sweet peaches and cream. Apple, yes, but now it's gone a bit baked apple, a bit baked goods. Just fantastic. £46. If you like winter warmers, if you like cast strength whiskey, I think the fact that you can pick up something of that intensity, that density, that flavour, it is spirity. It's going to taste younger than your Aaron 10 year old. There is no doubt about that. It's going to have a bit more drive, a bit more purpose about it. And it's going to finish drier than your Aaron 10. But it's going to, it's going to want to make you go back. It's going to give you the ability to play with water, to see what happens when you Ralphie it up and throw a teaspoon in. It's going to be very, very fun. Park uh, Caldenby is in saying, right, half past midnight, so I have to hit the sack. Thanks for an interesting presentation tonight, Roy. You're just going to miss the quiz tonight, and you're perhaps going to have to come back, Par, to hear what my top five distilleries I wish had a cast strength are. Jimmy Legacy, and I have a bottle of the Bodega at 55.8. Not at all impressed. You are loony, says Aquaviti. Jimmy, I think that that you've come, you've been in Scotland now, you've been here for a wee while, and maybe it opened your eyes a wee bit to, to other avenues and other lanes and other profiles. I know that it's not going to be your last time, and as you continue to make these return trips to Scotland, or maybe going to have the opportunity to let you see outside of, or maybe not. Maybe we should just leave you happy in your spot where you are. I know. Excess to Scotch is saying we don't always have to agree. Of course, uh, excess to Scotch, Scotch is saying thirty-seven ninety-five in the Netherlands euros. So that's about thirty-four pounds. Incredible. Germany and the Netherlands is one of the best places to buy Scotch whiskey. <laughs> Jimmy. can get rid of this poll now and hopefully it'll summarize it for everybody big ed there's where the one i'm looking for excellent v pub as always roy my bottle of ard arrives tomorrow cheers which is that ard namurchen ard more ard beg <laughs> ard noho <laughs> fantastic big ed thank you so much i know you're talking about ard namurchen a hey, great to have you in terrific for you to buy me a wee dram thank you so much cheers Here's the thing. You know that summary I showed you at the start? I'll bring it up here because I think it's important. I showed you all of the, the prices and how they averaged out. I've just shown you that Aaron quarter cask. It was included by my mistake, in this section here. So if we take the Aaron out, that 72.50 jumps, and this 65 pounds over here drops. Because Aaron was founded pre-2000, but the quarter cask is a much more recent thing. 46 pounds. As far as I can tell, one of, if not the cheapest, cask strength whiskies on the market today, and cannot it can hold a candle to everything I've sipped tonight. It can go toe to toe with everything, based on value alone. It is one of the most compelling whiskies that's out there. Know that you probably need to be an enthusiast to get to grips with it and enjoy it. It's going to be a wee bit more challenging, 
a wee bit younger than your typical Aaron's, a wee bit more spirit forward. It's going to shout loudly. It's going to command your attention on every sip. I guarantee you that you will not regret spending £46 on a bottle of Aaron Quarter Cask. Satchin is saying, I'm drinking Elijah Craig Barrel Proof at the moment. Lovely stuff. You're getting that Kentucky hug, aren't you, Satchin? That full-on power, that potency that Elijah Craig Barrel Proof brings. The thing that seems to just make so much more sense in the winter time, I think. Herbin, uh, I don't even want to pronounce your attempt. Uh, Louverk, I know I always make a mess of it, Herbin. But he's saying, I won't be here much longer as well. My alarm clock is without scruples. See you all next time, Aquavidi, and thanks for another great lesson. I hope it's not a lesson and more of a wee bit of just hanging out and having a wee dram. But I hear you on the alarm clock. At the weekend, we spoke to the Europeans that were visiting and just how many of them hang out until late into the morning. They're an hour ahead of us. So while we approach midnight tonight, we're about 20 minutes away from midnight, aren't we? It's 20 minutes to one for the Europeans. Thank you for joining, Gervin. Thank you so much. And Greg in Paris is saying, when the first release of Arnaho is expected, by the way, do you know? I asked them outright. And they, they said it's not ready yet. I met uh, I met Andrew actually in the Bon Accord, and he said uh, probably two years, and that was earlier this year. So I suspect we might not get it even next year, Greg. But you just never know. Fastgraph is saying indeed the duty free at Dublin Airport was even more for non EU flights, more expensive than German online prices. It's just crazy. I, I just don't understand why why. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. Is the Aaron quarter cask Aaron mostly or all uh, mostly or all bourbon? Absolutely mostly or all bourbon. Let's see if it tells us anything there on the label. I just says aromatic warm spice vanilla go my apple notes. If there is any sherry in this at all, Jimmy, it's not making its presence known. I would suggest to you that this is all bourbon, all refill, tipped into quarter casks for the final 18 months or so of maturation. Um that's the way it always used to be. It used to be an 18 month uh, finish in quarter casks. So I suspect there's no sherry in this whatsoever. I should have probably checked before I recommended it so heartily. Anyway, let me share with you what I would put forward, what I would suggest to you are the distilleries that should that could possibly do us all proud by releasing a cast strength version. Why don't you shout about the distilleries that you think should have a cast strength version? I'll share mine with you now. I have no intel. I have no idea that if any of these are actually going to release. None at all. This is just my wish list. It's Christmas time. Let's wish. Loch Lomond, you're treating us right now. You have quite a complex range right now. You've got three different 12-year-olds. You've got entry-level stuff with the uh, the supermarket stuff. You've got the steam and fire. You've got uh, older age statements. You've got a great, great, great range. Loch Lomond, treat us with a cast strength version. Something special, something nice, something that we can really get our head around. Glen Cadham. We're a wee bit nervous because we saw the price of the Glen Cadam 18. But in the big context, the big scheme of things, maybe it's not your focus. We understand. There isn't enough ex-bourbon. We've got that Aaron that we've just sipped tonight, we suspect is. Toravake is. Coquerin certainly is. We're enjoying the flavour. We're enjoying the profile. You're very good at that. Give us a cast strength version. Make it core range. Make it a decent vat in size, a decent scale, make it economies of scale, bring us at a good price. Maybe we're asking too much. What about Glen Murray? Glen Murray is something that remains flying so low under the radar of the enthusiast. I suspect that the thing that will make us sit up and pay attention to one of the most unique profiles out there in Scotch whiskey could be a cast strength release from La Martini Case from Glen Murray. That would be fantastic to see. How about Craig Elliche? I would be scared of, of the price, honestly. But if you can bring out your 13-year-old 
50 to 55 pounds of that order, surely you can bring us a good value cast strength. 17 is a bit pricey. The 19, pricey. Older than that, unaffordable for the mere enthusiast such as me. More on that in future VPUBs. Craig Elliott, a cast strength version. I think it's the least likely out of the list I'm going to share with you tonight, but I'm asking for it anyway. And finally, how about something from the Isle of Mull? How about either a Tobermory, but preferably electric? Now, I know that there have been cast strength versions released in the past, special editions, yes, I understand, high ABV, but I'm speaking about a core range, a decent size vatting, something we can, we can all sit down and sit together, regardless of where we sit on the planet, something we can connect with, something that is, reaches that magical economies of scale and we can enjoy it. How about that? Am I asking too much? Loch Lomond, Glen Cadam, Glen Murray, Craig Elliott and Lechick. Now, as you saw earlier on, there are a number of distilleries out there that still don't have a cast strength release. And that's absolutely fine. They don't need to have a cast strength release. But it was very, very hard for me to tease through all of the ones that still didn't have a cast strength release and decide which ones I preferred. Let me go back to my original point. How many times have I mentioned Diageo tonight, Pernod Ricard? How many times have I mentioned even Beam Centauri? I've mentioned Lefroy Cast Strength earlier tonight. It's very good. How about Edrington? How about Grants? There will be opportunities for me to mention these producers in the future. And I want, I desperately want positive things to say. I will find things that are positive about some of them, but not all of them. We've been able to talk about an entire movement, an entire selection, an entire compelling value proposition and offering, offering in whiskey without touching the top four, the top five, arguably even the top six. What is happening in whiskey? Al is in. Good to see you, Al. Saying pick to pick, picked up Craig Ellicott 13 for £42 in Glasgow Airport on Monday. What a deal. Fantastic. Peter is saying, if cast strength and independent bottlings, great stuff around. That's right, Frank. It's, it's fantastic. And I do enjoy my independent bottlings too. Unfortunately for the folk who are out there and anywhere further than the... the there are some small batch, some larger batch and independent bottlings that's starting to become something that we can all enjoy a wee bit more. But independents tend to be very, very small batch or single cask. That's naturally where we end up as enthusiasts. Kyle Taylor is saying, how about the Balmina cast strength? Warm tubs and dunnages, man. Eight warm tubs and dunnages, too much to ask, I know. Balmina, I know. Balmina, why, why are they so precious? Why are Inverhouse so precious with their Balmina? Black Fen is saying, I'd add naturally presented Dura to that list. I think I would too, Black Fen. That would be interesting to see. It would be wonderful to see. Andrew Pierce, a young legit cast strength for 50 to 60 pounds would be awesome. Andrew's agreeing with me. Uh, CB World is in. Uh, good to see you. Fantastic. Jimmy Lake is saying, did you ever have the Valanche? No, not yet. I have not. Certainly not owned a bottle. Jimmy Chris Pollock is saying a Craig Alec cast strength would be just great. And XS2 Scotch is saying, best list ever Aquavite. It's, it's, there's a lot of people out there agree with that. I, uh, uh, I, there's, there's, there's so many names that I can't pronounce tonight. I savory. I X silvery. I X silvery. I'm sorry, my friend, he's saying, what's your thoughts on Kubokin 15? Love to see a cast strength from them. Kubokin 15 has got nice ABV. It's naturally presented. It's fantastic whiskey. Loved the, the release last year. Love the release this year. Interested to see the ever so subtle difference. I think this year's, and I need to spend a wee bit more time with it, I managed to salvage enough from the blind tasting at the weekend to have enough to do a, a compare and contrast with last year's. But it just seems a little bit drier and a little bit uh, less cask forward, which usually suggests it's going to be more enjoyable to me. Graham Fraser is saying, um, sorry, jump jumped here. Uh, at least we got to try drams of the uh, Craig Elliott 19 and 23-year-old at the Festival Roy. I didn't get that far, Graham, but fair play to you for being able to try them. Well done. 
So there, I've revealed it to you, my wish list, the, the, the cast strength whiskey that I'm currently measuring and all others buy when it comes to value proposition, the Aaron. And it's not just because it's the cheapest. There are cheaper cast strength whiskies out there. If you look, you can find things that are cheaper. But it's about the presentation and it's about the quality on offer, the consistent quality on offer that never drops below a certain baseline. That's amazing. Up to the point of 65 to 70 pounds, anything north of 70 pounds is starting to become a big ask, I think. 65 seems to be the sweet spot for a cast strength whiskey. Now, I'm going to suggest to the producers out there that that should be interesting for them when 45 to 50 is the is the is where they should be playing for core range releases. It's not for the enthusiast to tell a business where how they should price their whiskey. It's not our whiskey, I understand. But after we go and give them our money, it's our whiskey. It's very much our whiskey. And in order for it to be our whiskey, the value proposition has to be there. It's still possible today. Chris Pollack is saying, hopefully Santa is listening. And I I savory, I savory, I sovery. Exovery? Let's go with Exovery. It's saying the name is due to a change after a few. I can't pronounce it either. <laughs> you just have provided me with fuel to pull the trigger on another bottle of Kuboken 15. I don't want to be a, anybody that... Well, let's say that if something is poor, I'll call it out. But when it's just good whiskey and Kuboken 15 is good whiskey, then if you enjoyed last year's, I don't think you're going to have any problem with this year either. We had the blind challenge at the weekend went down very well. Nobody had any complaints about it. Um, but it is a £96 bottle. I bought two to spread amongst the 60 participants at the weekend. £96 a bottle they were too. We do have a quiz at the end tonight. Of course we do. We always do. We, all, we always have a quiz at the end. Uh, tonight, um, I was a wee bit worried that it would be a bit tricky. But I tend to find that these things often don't work out the way I imagine. So let's give it, let's give it a wee try. Let's see how we go tonight. Remember, everyone, thanks for joining me tonight. If it's not uh, your thing to sit back and relax with me and do a quiz, and you're going to um, take your leave, thank you so much. I think there was 400 plus of you participating at the peak tonight, and I really do appreciate the support. But I know a lot of you enjoy hanging out for the wee quiz challenge at the end. It's always multiple choice. You don't need to share your score if you don't want to, but I know if it's a lot of fun when you do. And you can follow the crowd, but I tend to throw in a few banana skins and things like that. So remember, go with your gut if you feel that your gut is correct, of course. With multiple choice, there's a good chance that you're going to score 33% just by throwing darts. Okay, let's bring this up. I'll try and bring the chat to the front as well and try and speak to you over on this screen. I've got a completely different setup because of the camera issues tonight. Um, how's the camera been? Has it been okay? Add this in. Good luck everyone as I take a big drink of water after all these cast strength drams. My Jeff Whiskey coaster was stuck to the bottom of my glass. Good stuff. Good luck, everyone. Ten questions. Pass mark is five. Question one. Which distillery has a Caribbean reserve, a 15-year-old French oak reserve, and a 12-year-old double oak? Does that ring any bells? Which of these distilleries has both a Caribbean, 15-year-old French oak, and a 12-year-old double oak? I suggest that there might be a wee bit of a banana skin here, but let's roll with it. Question one, A, Balvenie, B, Glenlivet, or C, Glenfiddich? A, Balvenie, B, Glenlivet, or C, Glenfiddich? Ooh. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> Splitting the crowd already, right from the get-go. Quite incredible to see. 
I can tell you that a lot of you have got it right. <laughs> Whiskey with Molly went with A originally, switched to B in a timely fashion to get it absolutely right. It's Glenn Levitt. Uh, I don't know why I'm getting a screen flash up, but let's go with it. It is indeed Glenn Levitt. A Caribbean cask is a Bolveni. Uh, it's a 14-year-old. And Double Wood is also Bolveni, but French Oak Reserve 15-year-old and a 12-year-old Double Oak, Double Oak sorry, are very much uh, Glenn Levitt. Question two. While making a visitor centre distillery tour, where would you find a Loman still still in operation today. As you're making your way around a tour, where would you have the privilege of seeing a working Loman still? A. Brookladdy, B. Loch Lomond, or C. Scapa? While making a visitor centre distillery tour, where would you find a Loman still in operation today? Oops. <laughs> Hopefully you also have the chance to get your answer out before I click the mouse there. I can tell you that there are two places that you can, and it's not Loch Lomond. Loch Lomond have straight neck pot stills that uh, I was one of the people in the past that used to, con used to confuse them with Loman stills. But you will see a working Loman still producing malt whiskey at Scapa in Orkney. You will also see a Loman still in production at Brookladdy making the botanist gin, the, the uh, ugly Betty, as she's called. Two out of two, good stuff for uh, Ben. He's keeping it on track. Lots and lots of people on two out of two, two so far. Terrific stuff. Question three with regard to branding. Which distillery might you associate with a unicorn? Where would you see a unicorn? A. Dalmore, B. Fettercairn, or C. Tam the Villain? While well, you're doing that, I'm going to try something else because I'm not enjoying this screen flash. Okay, this is, you're all answering the exact same. This is far too easy for you. You're all doing very, very well so far. And I can tell you that you're absolutely spot on. I honestly like this camera better, says Jimmy Leg. <laughs> and Aquaviti, can you explain why? The screen flash is because I'm using screen share and rather than using animations, which are nice and smooth, I'm going from slide to slide. So it, it, that's, that's all it is. And here we have B is absolutely Fetter Cairn, and here we have a wee logo of Fetter Cairn here. Yeah, the, the national animal of Scotland, the, the unicorn, wouldn't you know? Okay, question four. Some facts, almost like a mini I am a distillery, founded in 1898, bought by an independent bottler in 1993, released a cast strength expression since the mid 1990s, Red Chimney Distillery, who am I? A, Edredor, B, Annandale, C, Ben Romach, founded in 1898, bought by an independent bottler in 1993, released a cast strength expression since the mid 90s, and it's a red chimney distillery. Are we talking about A. Edredor, B. Annandale, or C. Ben Romack? Four, question four. Let's skip ahead to that. I'm going to bring this in and see if it's any better. That is, this is hopefully going to be better, and I'll run it from here from now on in. Maybe we can stop that screen flash thing happening now. Okay. You're all absolutely spot on. Nailed it with Ben Romack. Knowledgeable, knowledgeable folk. Maybe the Red Chimney gave it away. Maybe the Independent Bottler buying it in 93 bought it, or maybe it was the 1898. 
fantastic. There's lots of you going to be doing very well on a four out of four so far. Here's a picture question coming up. Sorry, that's just a wee picture of Ben Romack. This is a picture from last week. But here's another chimney. Not a red one this time. And I'm just going to ask you, where are we? Are we A in Highlands, B in the Speyside, or C in the Lowlands? A in Highlands, B in Speyside, or C in the Lowlands? Where are we as we look at that image there? Benny is saying, with a little experience, you'll probably get it running smooth in a couple of years. Yeah, I'm on my way, Benny. I think I'm getting better. <laughs> that was a shame that uh, I was uh, derailed earlier tonight. Uh, the camera just, uh, with an update on the Mac software, means that the camera that I usually use is out, which meant I had to change lots of other things. But we've still managed to pull off a V-Pub, so I'm okay with it. It's fine. A hey Highland, B Speyside, C Lowland, kicking out the park again. You're all starting to feel a wee bit comfortable, but it's going to start to get a wee bit crunchy. Molasses Mike is saying a new distillery, but I had to think of where it was. Lol, that's exactly the point, Mike. Terrific stuff. And we are indeed in the Lowlands. We're looking at Rosebank Distillery. Uh, thanks to Graham Fraser for providing another very cool picture for the VPUB quiz at the end. Let's go head home now. Question six, going to start getting a bit trickier now. Colhoman have released a 16-year-old at £200. What ABV did they choose to release it at? It's kind of a strange move by Colhoman. A lot of us were talking about it all weekend. A lot of disappointment around. A lot of people have bought it because they're, they're committed and they're Colhoman fans. But even the people that were excited and bought it did complain about the price. Maybe Colhoman are quite happy to deal with that. Daniel Williams is saying, basically missed all VPUB and SMWS tasting. Loved last weekend. Need to come over again soon. Festival in Leiden next year, says Daniel Williams. Daniel, it was terrific to finally see you there. Uh, I'm keeping your box closed and sealed until, what is it, you call it, Sinterklaas? Um, and we'll open it on the 5th of December. But in the meantime, my friend, thank you for your dram. Thank you for appearing and joining us last week at the weekend, and I'm so happy to hear that you enjoyed it. Cheers, Daniel. The ABV that the Colhoman was released at was either A, 46%, B, 50%, or C, 55% cast strength. Julian Rickman is pointing out that there's a nice limited Colhoman Marks and Spencers exclusive out at £35. That's the Loch Grunart. They didn't have it at the festival at the weekend, um, but a couple of folks have bought it and said that it's no bad. For £35, that's more like it. That's the Colhoman that we can engage with, of course. Not all Colhomans need to be £35. But I also think that it's a shame that some Colhomans are £200. And I know that the liquid is scarce. But that doesn't mean that I can afford it anymore. It doesn't mean that I suddenly find £200 that I didn't have because I understand that it's scarce. Anyway, this question is not about that. This question is about the ABV. Graham Fraser's saying B, I'll go with the crowd. <laughs> Good call, Graham Fraser. 50% ABV. 50% ABV. More to discuss about Colhoman's pricing policy and future VPUBs. Question seven. Balveni has a 17-year-old week of peat expression bottled at 49.4% ABV. How much are they charging relative to the to sorry Colhoman's 16-year-old? How much is Balveni charging for their 17-year-old week of peat? At 49.4% ABV, almost the same ABV, Colhoman was 50, remember? How much are they charging? Is it A, Balvenie are charging around half of Colhoman's pricing? B, Balvenie are charging about the same? Or C, Balvenie for their 17-year-old are charging almost double for their week of peat? Martin Feeler, good to see Martin. St. B, Kyle, Kyle Taylor is thinking A. Petrocelli is in, good to see Petrocelli. Whiskey Tutor, B, Whiskey Tutor. I wonder if that would be, could that be John? Is that you, John Lowen? Are you in? It'd be wonderful to have you participating if you're here. 
Where's Roy? Good to see you, Roy, at the weekend. Terrific stuff for you back home in Norway now. Bruno Martin's from Portugal. Superb. Bogdan Avram is here as well. I got to see Bogdan at the weekend. Just so much celebrity in the lounge tonight. Amazing to see you all. Fantastic. Nicholas thinking A. Gordon Fraser saying B. Mark Chapman saying A. This is splitting the crowd. So is the Bolveni week of Pete. About half the price, the same price, they're almost double. I can tell you Bolveni 17-year-old week of Pete at 49.4%. Half the price of Colhoman at just a nudge over £100. Interesting the way that the dynamics are moving in whiskey. So if you answered A, give yourself a point. Cal Taylor's on seven. Hells Wind's on seven. Andrew Hamaker on seven. Peter Box, good to see you, Peter, on seven. Gabriel Welding on seven. Danny Keenan on seven. <laughs> Lots of you holding on. Sugar Kitty on seven as well. Terrific stuff. Question eight. Which of these cast strength releasing distilleries is the oldest? I'm going to give you three distilleries. I just want to know which the oldest one is. A, Glasgow Distillery. B, Toravec Distillery. Or C, Clydeside. Glasgow and Glasgow. Toravec on Sky or Clydeside in Glasgow? Which of those three is the oldest? Andrew Pierce has gone for B. Good to see you. Lachlan McKenzie. Looks like a new name, Lachlan. It's good to welcome you in the VPUB. Thanks for hanging out with us. Crowd helped again, says Graham Fraser. It's fantastic. Somebody's learned is Graham Fraser is admitting that he does lean on the crowd. It's fantastic. Greg's whiskey again, he's saying, oh, maybe he's wobbling a wee bit, perhaps. Three very new distilleries here, all releasing cast strength uh, versions, either annual releases or limited uh, releases. We've got Glasgow, Torovec, or Clydeside. And of course, most of you have got it absolutely right. 2015 for Glasgow, 2016 for Torovec, and 2017 for Clydeside. Glasgow is the oldest now. It's not far away from Glasgow being able to release a double-digit age statement. I'm not sure that they will. Certainly not get any intelligence there, but they've been around a wee while now. Starting to show in the product. Shame I couldn't open the Glasgow tonight, but there will be room for to do that in a future VPUB. Jimmy Legg celebrating an 8 out of 8 as we roll into the second last question from the end. Not as tough a quiz as I thought, perhaps. Question nine, which distillery was the first to appoint a woman in charge in 1927? The first to appoint a woman in charge in 1927. Was that A, Glenburgie? Some people pronounce it Glenburgie. I'm much more comfortable with Glenburgie. Uh, quite happy to be corrected. B, Cardew or C, Lefroig? A, Glenburgie, B, Cardew or C, Lefroig? Sugar Kitty is throwing the banana skins into the chat. My house, if it was a distillery. <laughs> Absolutely, Jimmy. You know the score. It's me too. Which was the first distillery to appoint a woman? Now we are going to see some attrition here. There is a banana skin in here. Lachlan McKenzie suggesting that it's Cardew. Falsegraph, um, yes, I stay at sea but not sure. A lot of people wobbling. Uh, Yuri, simply about whiskey. Good to see you in, Yuri. Fantastic. Where's Roy? Also going to be. I thought I knew it, but the banana skin throws me off. Elizabeth Cummings from Cardew was in the 19th century. Uh, Betty Williamson in Lefroig was very much in the 20th century, but post war. Elizabeth Cummings and Betty Williamson both inherited the distillery. It was actually Margaret Nicholl in 1927 that was appointed, chosen to be in charge of Glenburgie Distillery. The first woman that was not there through inheritance, but through appointment. Margaret Nicholl, Glenburgie. I know that's a tricky one for you. I knew it was going to be a tricky one. It was put in at the end. Is anyone hanging on with a nine out of nine? Is anyone celebrating that? Or did that take the wheels off a lot of people before we go into an awful, awful, awful ASAC question at the end? Mark Chapman, good to see you, Mark, on a seven out of nine. 
Danny Keenan also on a seven. Falscraft swearing, saying six out of nine. Low point for me. Oh, Graham Fraser on nine out of nine. Banana skin nearly threw me. So Graham Fraser's the only guy hanging on. Peter Lee's on a nine out of nine as well. Jimmy Legacy, lol, awful, awful, awful. Yes, here goes the ass hat at the end, Jimmy. Here is the awful ass hat. How many new Scotch malt distilleries begin with the letter A? <laughs> New distilleries in the context of the VPUB all throughout tonight. New distilleries, meaning distilleries founded since the year 2000. It's the same number as A. Established distilleries beginning with A. That means distilleries that are not new. Is the same number uh, of distilleries established beginning with A as new distilleries beginning with A. Or is it B? the same number as years since Ardnahoe was founded? Or is it C, the same number as all the distilleries new and established, beginning with B? I told you it was awful. I'm just asking to find out how many new distilleries do you think exists that begin with A? I'll give you a couple as a clue to set you on your way. How about Avangaric? How about Annandale? How about Ardnamurkin? Maybe you've forgotten about Ardross. How many are there new distilleries beginning with A? Is it the same as the amount of established distilleries that began with A? Is it the same as the amount of years since Ard Ardnahoe was founded? Or is it the same as the number of all distilleries beginning with B? It's an awful ass hat. I apologise. Let's see if we can keep Graham... Fraser together for his 10 out of 10. Let's see if he's managed it. Let's have a wee look. Gordon Fraser saying, oh man, Gordon, I can only, I can't see Graham Fraser. Can't see his answer. Okay, let's just reveal. I can tell you that new distilleries beginning with A is Aberargy, Avangaric, Ilsa Bay, Arendale, Arbicki, Ardnahoe, Ardnamurkin, and Ardross. That's eight distilleries. And the number of established distilleries beginning with A is also eight. Years since Ardnahoe was founded, six years now. All distilleries beginning with B. There are a remarkable 18 distilleries beginning with B. 16 beginning with A. Eight of which are established old distilleries, let's say and eight are new distilleries. There is the ass hat, and I apologise because I may just have given Graham a wee punch in the stomach, and apologies. Desi is in, oh sorry, Desi, Desi Vleeland is here. Good to see you. Wonderful to have you as part of the troop all over the course of the weekend, Desi. I hope you had a fantastic time. You seemed pretty happy for most of what I saw. I hope that's true of most of you. Fantastic. There we go. Let's take that away. Let's see if anybody is celebrating. <laughs> Molasses Mike is celebrating getting an ass hat question and Graham Fraser is celebrating getting a 10 out of 10. Thanks to the crowd though, as he was admitting, as he, as he would, was admitting that halfway through tonight, he was using and leaning on the crowd. There's nothing wrong with that. The reason that we can all raise our knowledge pool so much quicker is to lean on each other and learn from each other. That's why we're all here. Benny Fries has bought me a dram, you star. He said, thanks for tonight's VIPA, Roy. Sorry for being cheeky earlier on. I'll try to behave from now on. Benny, I don't have any recollection of you being uh, cheeky. I now need to go back and see what that's about. There's no need to apologise, my friend. Wonderful to have you here. I need to get you over for a gathering at some time in the future, Benny. Or maybe I need to come to you. Slancho, Benny Fries, thank you very much for your dram. Oh, that was a PT tour of ache. I raised for that one. Terrific stuff. Thank you all so, so much. I know that the quiz was a wee bit crunchy tonight, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Jimmy Legg swings in at the last and bring, buys me a dram. A cast strength dram for you. Great fun as always. Big hugs to you, Jimmy Legg. Thank you so much for chiming in with a wee hello from Angie earlier as well. Thank you for always being here. It's brilliant to have your support as always. Thank you for the dram, Jimmy. Cheers. The cask strength dram too. Um, it seems like I don't need to apologise for the camera. We managed to make it work. 
it's quite amazing that I've made, been able to do this tonight with my phone. It's quite amazing to have the focus working so well too. The focus is working so much better than my regular camera setup. I just need some professional help is the truth. I can't use my phone for the camera every week. But we managed to get through it tonight and I've got a week until the free pub next week to work out what kind of camera setup is going to work for us next week. And next week is a wee bit of a celebration. It's a wee bit self-indulgement, but I won't make a big deal about it. But in order to celebrate a very significant milestone, what I'm going to do next week is push the boat out and I'm going to look at whiskies that are special, whiskies that mean that we need to maybe consider spending a wee bit more money on. It's a wee bit of uh, a long time since I did that, that style of EPUB, but I'm still going to be very, very mindful of value. I'm not just going to throw away money. I want something that delivers back. Uh, the week after that is looking like, well, I'll park that for now because there's a there's two or three different things that can happen, but I'm hoping to get uh, a couple of people involved for a very, very specific thing about analysing and tasting whiskey at the end of the month on the 30th. We'll see if we can pull that together. It depends on people's availability. And then the week after that, I've got what the in industry drinks with um, Connell Mack from Adelphi. Hopefully, if everything works out Lots of things to look forward to in December as well, but we're still halfway through November. And tonight has been a, quite a heavy session, <laughs> look me looking at Cast Strength whiskies. I hope it's been fun for you. Alice bought me a dram as well. Thanks as always, Roy. Thank you to you, Al, as I go all the way back. Oh, I'm nosing here. This must be the, it's not the Ben Romack. It is, it's the Ben Romack. Al, thank you for your drama, friend. Cheers to you. Suddenly doubt myself now. Anyway, I'm going to raise this glass to all of you. Desi is saying thanks for another fab V pub, Roy. Thank you so much, Desi, for being in. Whiskey Mystery, superb to see you and Phil. Your main camera should have a setting to refocus speed eh, buried deep in the menus. No, it's the problem is, is that I... Uh, Upgraded to Sonoma, Phil and Deepa. I've upgraded the operating uh, software for the Mac and it doesn't support uh, the Canon utility software anymore. <laughs> so I didn't have a camera to go live with tonight. So I've made the phone work. Uh, brilliant to have you in. So good to see you here. Uh, it's probably going to be Phil. Hoy Hempel, not a bad quiz. Kick myself uh, on the first one since I'm a fan of Glen Levitt French Oak. <laughs> so <laughs> you got that wrong, Hoyt. Wonderful to see you in. Uh, Yuri is saying, oops, jumps. Uh, thank you for another great VPUB. Good night, everyone. Good night to you too, Yuri, as well. Brilliant to have you here, my friend. Thanks for helping to get the weekend underway. Cheers, says Gene Kelly. Ah, that means Thursday night feels like the start of the weekend for me too, Gene. Well, wonderful stuff. Graham Fraser saying, thanks as ever, Roy. Thanks to you too, Graham. Thanks for everything that you do. Jimmy Leg, you look fine. After so many cast strength sips, good for you. Yes, I have been trying to be careful. I'm feeling it. But everything's good. Hellswood is saying, hey, good night, Roy, and all you wonderful barflies and whiskey folk. Rick Johnson is saying, as always, an evening well spent. Thanks for the fun discussion, Roy. And Mike Molasses is saying, good night, barflies, and thanks for the tastiest V pub and recent memory, Aquavita. You've been enjoying some uh, good whiskies, Mike, obviously. Note, my memory is quite short these days. <laughs> Andrew Hamaker is saying, good night, and thank you, Roy. Listen, I'm going to raise this glass to all of you and look forward to next Thursday's V pub. And remind you all that in the meantime, whatever you're out there doing, enjoy your whiskies responsibly, enjoy your whiskies together. Try and share them if you can. What just happened there? It's maybe my phone. I don't know. I'm going to remind you all that you are very dearly loved. I look forward to hanging out with you again next Thursday night. Until then, slant you far, beautiful whiskey folk. Mm -hmm.